Oh. Well then, everyone. Morning, 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 morning. Oh. I am from London, Phil. <laughs> I am from the UK. <clears throat> I'm doing well, Joel. Yes, I'm very doing very well. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. You get to see the usual faces here from the beginning. Oh, man. Who's ready for the... Uh, ready for the Japanese GP, eh? Morning, Pug. Morning, Tyre. Good to see the usual faces. Morning, got my coffee. I, I would say I'm fresh. I'm far from fresh. <laughs> Can I say TV instead of telemetry? Unfortunately not, Nicholas, because that would be against the law and copyrights. And would result in me losing my channel, which I'm not going to do. And it's like three hours. Yeah, I think I barely even got that. I went to sleep just after midnight. Well, I tried to go to sleep just after midnight, but yeah, it didn't go well. So. <coughs> oh, two cups of coffee five hours ago and currently fasting and staying up for the race. Nice, nice. What time is it where I am? Uh, just gone half five. What are you giving? Yeah, just gone 5.30. So I woke up 15 minutes ago. <laughs> Am I excited? Do you know what? I can't say I'm excited for F1 at the moment. Like, I'm I'm always optimistic that we'll, we'll get a good race, hopefully. But I wouldn't say I'm excited. And it's a shame to say, to be honest with you. I don't know about uh, uh, how you guys feel. Like, I love F1, but... You still wake up every morning, every session, and expect to see Red Bull at the top, Max Verstappen at the top. Um, and that's the state of F1 at the moment. So, I'll, I'll be... There are certain races I get excited for, but... We'll see. We'll see. Last time around, Australia threw a right spanner in the works. Didn't they? Uh, didn't it? So we got, of course, Max Verstappen's mechanical failure. Um, this time around, quite evidently, they are the quickest. Um, so we need something from Sergio Perez today. Fingers crossed for there to be a fight. Um, I don't think anyone's really expecting it, but he, he made he took it close yesterday, didn't he? With qualifying, so <clears throat> Suzuka is one of the greatest tracks in the world, Phil. Um, it's it's brilliant. My top three today. Uh, we'll have a look at the top three. Who my top three possibly may be. I think it'll be who the top three are at the moment, to be honest with you. I think it'll be Perez. I think it'll be Max, Perez, and Norris. I think Norris has been very strong here. So, <laughs> Favourite team? Um, I obviously err more on the side to Mercedes because they've got the two Brits driving for them, Lewis Hamilton and George Russell. Um... I've always been a big fan of McLaren growing up. Mika Hakkinen was one of my favourite drivers, if not my favourite driver growing up. Um, and yeah, that's that's about it really. I've all, I've got a bit of a soft spot for Williams as well. Uh, another British team. So yeah, they're kind of like my favourites. I Ferrari, eh, I don't hate them. I don't love them. So I'm somewhere like in the middle with Ferrari. I think it's good for the sport if they're like up there winning races again. So it was good to see them, obviously, last week or last time around. But <clears throat> just wait a little bit longer for those of you who are waking up and joining the stream because we do have this weekend. It seems the Pirelli admin, uh, social media admin, has done us a favor and posted the possible race strategies and the tire allocations for this weekend. We didn't get that in Australia. So we'll do the usual if you're new here and have a look at the tyre strategies and uh, obviously what people have available to them today. So uh, Suzuka, normally quite hard on the tyres. It's a very high 
speed, um, high speed track. So a lot of load is put and uh, energy put through the tires. So normally is a two stop race. Um, so we'll see, we'll see. Especially Schumacher more uh, for his career, more of a fan now than I was back in the day. Yeah, I think, I think you always respect dominance more once you look back on it. You look, you, you respect the achievements more rather than at the time um, because of you wanting there to be competition. I think that's the same. I think it'll be the same for Lewis. I think it'll be the same for Max eventually when like, they both retire. Sebastian Vettel now as well. People hated Vettel at the time. And now um, he's one of like people's favorites. Right. Lovely, I can get set up here early, which is what I like to see. What I like to see. Right. Uh, Team-wise, Williams was always my top tourist. Yeah, it depends on what kind of era you grew up in as well. Um, I only do these for quality. Nicholas, I don't do them for free practice um, because I'm always working when free practice is on. Um, so I will try and make a free practice session if it kind of falls in an evening time on a Friday for, for myself here in the UK. But um, yeah, I still work full time. So um, I try and make every quality and at least every race what I can. There'll probably be a couple of qualifying sessions that I'll miss this year just due, due to family commitments. It's a lot of races this year, 24. Is it 24? 24 races. So that's a lot of Saturdays. <laughs> and um, I'm sure um, the missus will at some point book something in for me on a Saturday uh, on a race weekend. As long as I can make the races, that's the main thing though, guys. That's the main thing. That's what people mostly want to tune in for. Speaking of Vettel, thoughts of him coming back to F1? Um, I think it'd be a mistake, Jewel. I think it'd be a mistake for Vettel. I think he's had his time. I think... Um, but don't... I think there's just, there's, we discussed this yesterday on stream. There's a number of youngsters who are in a better position to step into a team. Um, they're quick enough and proven that they can jump into these top teams now and get the job done and do a job. Um, and they'll have plenty more years ahead of them. Whereas Vettel, we've, we've done that. Um, I, I don't think it would be... I don't think it would be good for, for anyone, really. I get back here, right? Uh, for, <laughs> yeah, sorry, sorry, Ty. I'm, I'm going to uh, make you feel a bit older. That was before I was born, so I'm not an 80s baby. I'm an early 90s baby, 91. Better was testing the Porsche, uh, might be driving the GC. Yeah, I think you'll get back into racing. Once, once you're a racer, you're always a racer, aren't you? So, um, Right, guys. Right, right. I think we've got enough of you in here, so let's have a look at the strategies, shall we? So, lo and behold, let's have a look. Morning, Casey. Morning, Sam. So, let's just um, close the chat box. Let's just close that. So, so as I said, Pirelli have given us these graphics. These are great, guys. These are great what they post up. I really truly missed this at Australia a couple of weeks ago. But clearly their admin was still asleep. Um, two stop a race. Two stop race if there are no safety cars at Suzuka, um, which is always the case here. Um, the teams are telling us how important strategy is going to be here today. So we should see some undercuts, possibly some overcuts. And well, yeah, you can see that the soft and the medium compound tire is in play here today um not it's not normal that the soft tire is a viable option um but there are a couple of drivers who have kept brand new soft tires available to them um so yeah we'll see if anyone decides to go bold and start on the soft today or whether they try and hold on to it onto the middle stint i'm surprised that they haven't um kept um put that in as a viable option to be honest with you but i, I I probably expect to see most people start on the medium compound tire. It leaves um, it leaves you open to um, having that variable of putting the soft compound tire on if there is a safety car, which 
often is the case at Suzuka, um, or to go onto the medium compound tire and do one of these, one of these many two-stop options here. Um, you can see obviously the soft to hard hard, the medium. I think this is probably the, the primary stop here. The second one, medium hard, uh, medium, um, or the medium hard hard. We'll see. We'll see. I suppose it depends all on what they see on the lap times in regards to uh, the hard compound tire. But <clears throat> I do have the tire locations. We'll have a look at that in just a sec, Mark. Good to see you. Uh, hey, King. Good morning, mate. That I I am tired, Blom. I am tired. It's it's just gone half five here in the UK, or uh, twenty to twenty to six. So I didn't get much sleep last night. I didn't get much sleep. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm, my, my coffee hasn't come into effect yet. So, <laughs> but um, I'm still here. I'm still here for you, regardless of my lack of sleep, guys. <laughs> I'll wake up. I'll wake up as the race goes on and stuff, guys. So don't worry. Morning, Andy. Good to see you, mate. Good to see you. Right, so let's have a look at tyre allocations, shall we? Let's have a look at those. So, here you can see a lot of drivers. So, Lance Stroll, <laughs> Lance Stroll has three new sets of softs available to him because he didn't make it out of Q1. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Lando Alonso, intriguingly, the only driver in the top 10 to keep a hold of a brand new set of soft compound tyres. We do kind of know, but the Red Bulls are so good on their tyres that they don't really need to hold a brand new set of softs. Um, they're still able to go very, very quick on a set of used ones. Um, but yes, we have Hamilton and Russell here in the two Mercedes um, with two brand new sets of hards and one brand new set of mediums. On the contrary, the Ferraris have two new sets of um mediums and only one set of hards they don't even have a used set of hards available to them so they're kind of locked into that two-stop strategy of medium hard medium um they might even be on this one soft hard medium so we'll see there maybe ferrari will go bold free to see what tires they start on um then we have piastri and norris to mclaren's on the similar strat to uh, the mercedes of course uh, verstappen and perez also um, similar to the Ferraris, only have one set of hearts available as well. So some varying strategies in the top 10, which is good to see. It's not just going to be like for like, guys. So we'll get at least a bit of variability um, in regards to the strategies today. So keep an eye out on that for out the race. I'll do my best to keep keep you guys informed. Uh, and then, of course, on the right-hand side here, we have all the drivers who didn't make it through to Q3, pretty much. Uh, apart from Sonoda, who has two new hards available to him as well um and then yeah sergeant albon joe they all have a lot of sauce available to them if they're not making it out of q1 so yeah intriguing here alonso's the outlier alonso is the outlier here because he's gonna have to use a set of softs because he doesn't even have two sets of mediums available so alonso Really mixing it up is going to have to do this free stop, two stop race at some point. The soft, medium, and hard compound tire, but in which order he does so is going to be intriguing. Um, not long until, of course, the tire blankets come off. Uh, we do have 15 minutes until the race starts. So, all right, now let's set up. Let's set up the data which is now available to us. Happy days, happy days. So. Let's just sort this out, guys. So I'm definitely going to need the free, um, the free stopper, and I put the, the, the free tires because they're going to be using those today. That's for sure. Maybe track limits will come into play today as well. Maybe we'll see. We'll see. There we go. Where do I get the data? Multi viewer multi-viewer guys if you're not familiar so you do need an f1 tv subscription um and then once you've got that subscription you're able to log in but we are ready to rock and roll pretty sure we are ready to rock and roll guys hopefully you can see everything let's go Hey, 
Hey Dale, good morning, morning. Um, 53 laps. It is 53 laps, yes. <clears throat> Who do I think is going to win? Um, I do think Max is going to win this one. I think we're going to see a very ominous display from him. Although, interesting that Sergio was so close to him in qualifying yesterday. So maybe Perez will get a bit spicy. I mean, someone said we need an incident down into T1. I wouldn't rule it out. I wouldn't rule it out. But the thing is, Max has Max has very much nailed like every single one of his starts. Um, so thus far this season, at the end of last season, like, I can't remember the last time he had a poor start. So not really many weaknesses in his um, driving at the moment. So, but national anthems are being played. Um, there's no night. Uh, there's no news overnight, really, in regards to any of their drivers taking any penalties or the like. Um, so the grid is what the grid is. We have a zero percent chance of rain, guys. So no rain at Suzuka for the first time in quite a long time. That was the whole um, idea of bringing um, or intention of bringing Suzuka forward in the calendar, so that um, there was the higher possibility of a drier race. Um, last few seasons have been quite quite a washout uh, because of um, it being later in the season. So, yeah, nice to see some blue sky in Japan um, in Suzuka. Suzuka without rain isn't Suzuka. Well, we did get some in the practice sessions, didn't we? <laughs> Watching your stream and the F1 TV live to see the cars. Oh, you'll see the cars, cars on here as well, Nick. That's the whole idea of the track map. Unless you're watching like the TV coverage. Because I know F1, F1 TV Live Pro, you're able to get, um, obviously, on boards, aren't you, and that, so. <clears throat> Spa without rain isn't Spa 2. <laughs> um, I do, yes. Yeah. So I, if anyone's intrigued by what my setup is, of course, I have. I have an ultra-wide monitor um, for like what I do all my sim racing on. Uh, so I have the data directly in front of me. I have my Streamlabs and OBS here, so I can see all the chat uh, and see myself and how the stream's displayed. Um, I then have an overhead monitor, which I have Twitter running and also have like my YouTube analytics to see how the stream is performing. Um, and then I have here on my left hand side, just down here, uh, in a headphone, not through these headsets, I've got a wireless headphone uh, I have Sky TV up on my phone which is slightly delayed to what the data is which is quite nice because I use it as kind of a replay tool because what I see happen on here I can then report back to you guys exactly what I see on Sky TV so it's not happening at the same time so so yeah if one fan but are races with rain more interesting or not not always Joel no not always I for me, the best races when rain is involved is um, when there's an, there's just so much of it that there's changing conditions. So the drivers have to change. So we either start on a wet track and it dries out, or we start on a dry track and it rains. Those are like the best races for me because then there's that risk element of how long do you stay out when do you come into the pits um there have been times where races have been won or lost most famously i think um land in recent times lando norris staying out too long on his um slick tires in russia in sochi um, and lewis hamilton came into pit earlier and he overtook him um, and norris kind of gave away it was his decision gave away his um his opportunity of his first ever win in F1. Uh, if it wasn't for the rain, he had that in the bag. And then uh, a few years ago as well, Lewis Hamilton made a great decision to pit um, a bit earlier onto a set of intermediate tyres. I think it was Silverstone. And um, yeah, it just, it really, they're the real intriguing races for me rather than just the outright wet races that we get. Because there's that risk element of the strategy of when you come in and pit. 1996 Monaco with the rain is one of the best of all time. Panis. I was a little bit too young for that one, Phil. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Morning, James. What is the most boring track on the F1 Canada? Oh, there's a lot of them at the moment, isn't there? 
as in a lot of tracks. Boring. Um. Oh. So it just, it depends on what you think is boring. So the first, I think the first one people will go to is 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 Monaco because the race the cars can't overtake there. But to see the F1 cars going around there at full speed isn't boring. But the racing's boring. Um, I think yeah, I I I think Miami is a great shout. Miami is a great shout. Where you go, Kiki? Good to see you. Um, I do I show the race? I only show the race via the telemetry, uh, well, via the data and the track map. I don't show the full TV coverage because that's against copyright. Um, what else? What else is there? I think Baku. I think Baku is quite boring. Like, if you think Baku, like, it, it's, it's just like straight, it's just right angles. Um, and there is no, that race in general, if there isn't a red flag or a safety car, it is always boring. It is always boring. I, I just don't, Baku is very uninspiring for me. Like if you actually think, yeah, Baku is the chaos element. It's not because of the actual circuit in itself. And I think it's a, I don't think Baku is actually a great track. So... Um, but yeah, then there's a couple of, I, I think, I think, um, I hate, I hate, 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 but we have this as the last track and race of the season. Abu Dhabi. Is anyone actually inspired by Abu Dhabi? Like, as a race circuit? Like, remove, remove the last lap drama that we got in 2021. Have we actually ever had a good race at, at, at twenty at, um, at Abu Dhabi? I think it's such a poor like finale to an F one season. I just don't think I just don't think there's anything that they've done to that track has made it better. That like the whole yeah, let's remove that last chicane or whatever it was uh, down the back straight. But even, like it's just yeah, it gives a bit more flow to it, but it's not really doesn't really provide us with the wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing that we want and make it more exciting. Inter Lagos should be the last race of the season. I'm adamant on that. Always provides drama. It's a great racing circuit. We always get wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing there um, throughout the field. Give us Inter Lagos as the last race of the season again. But unfortunately, money talks. So um, yeah. <coughs> <clears throat> Interlagos best track on the grid and you can't change my mind <laughs> it's definitely up there yeah it's always provided a great drama really like Monaco it's just crap it's a car too big yeah 100% yeah if you look at the comparisons of F1 cars today compared to when Sebastian Vettel won and Lewis Hamilton before the hybrid era they're so so small so small 41 degree Thailand rod woo hot 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 Morning, mate. Good to see you. Best track on our calendar. Silverstone. I'm biased. Don't care. My favourite track in the world to race in sim racing and to me, always provides great, great racing. So Silverstone, just... I love Spa, but Spa doesn't provide us the great races that we've seen um, probably within the last decade, but... Silverstone has provided. Silverstone just always provides great racing. So yeah, that's Silverstone for me. You get a bit of Silverstone this year. Nice, James. Nice. A bit out of my budget, unfortunately. <laughs> Unless someone invites me. Someone's watching this stream right now. And and you want to take me to a VIP experience at Silverstone. Actually, I'm cheap. I'm not even that expensive. Just a general admission ticket. I'm here. You've got a spare ticket, James, have you actually? I don't think everyone here would be too happy with me going Silverstone, though. <laughs> I 
Right, it's getting a bit warm in here actually, so I'm just going to go have to crack open the window. Give me two seconds, guys. We are only, if you're just joining us, we are less than, wow, I didn't realise the time. We are less than three, uh, just well, just over three minutes away from the formation lap getting underway. Not long until this Japanese Grand Prix, the first dry one in God knows how long, um, is get, is about to get underway. So, yeah, um, give me literally five seconds. There we go. Not sure if that was five seconds. <clears throat> oh, you're camping as well. Nah, sod that. An old man. An old man. You're lucky you're a member, James. That's that's uh, that's time out behaviour. That is. <laughs> right. Right, here we go. I know I need a shave, but Jesus. <laughs> and it's early in the morning. <laughs> Mauricio, I like you. I like you, Mauricio. 25. That's what I'm telling all my friends from now on. Anyone I meet, I'm 25 years old. Right, guys. Morning, morning, morning. If you're just joining us, the Suzuka, the Japanese Grand Prix is only minutes, well, Less than a minute away, I think now, until or just over a minute until it gets underway, the formation lap. We have tyre blankets off. And Fernando Alonso is going bold. He is the only driver in the top 10 or the top 11 who has a brand new set of softs available to him. And he is starting, the sole driver starting on the soft compound tyre there right in the middle of the top 10 so let's see if Alonso will be able to make up any positions at the start I thought he'd save them for a little bit later on in the race um, they would come in very handy especially if there is a safety car later on but yeah they're going bold they're going bold at the start as predicted everyone kind of in that top 10 is starting on the medium compound tire it leaves you open for the varying strategies uh, that are available to you uh, throughout this race. Definitely going to be a two-stopper. Um, so let's see. Let's see what this race has in store for us. Everyone below Ricardo, other than Magnussen and Joe, starting on the softs as well. So um, intriguing choices up and down the grid. We are definitely going to have to keep an eye out on those strategies, guys. Um, I'm going to make sure that I've got those popped up on my other screen uh, so I can keep you guys informed of when... We expect to see those pits. So if you want some numbers, guys, for those soft runners, you're looking at around laps 10 to 15 for those guys to come in and pit. We'll see if they take them longer than that. In the medium compound tires, they can take those, according to Pirelli, around 20 laps. So we'll see if that is the actual case. Uh, Pirelli sometimes are a little bit conservative on their strategies uh, and on um, those pit windows. We know that the teams can eke out the tires, but Suzuka is a very high loaded circuit so it might not be the case but yes uh lap kind of 15 at the latest it seems for the soft compounds and then lap 20 for the medium so about five laps longer at the early stages of the race it seems but uh, those tires can go <clears throat> will stake do a good pit stop <laughs> hopefully bottas has been quite quick here i think they've got potential to Maybe sneak some points. The top nine are just does seem to be do seem to be very strong. So oh the missus is awake. The missus, I thought she'd be asleep still. So uh, morning, George. Morning. Turn 39 last Thursday <laughs> for you. For the 14th time, Warren. Yes, yes. <coughs> <coughs> Apologies if there's still uh, obviously a couple of coughs during this stream as well. I am. Um, Still recovering. Still not quite a hundred percent from my illness that I had over the last week. But here we go. Formation lap under away, guys. So let's run through this grid today. Thank you for everyone for tuning in. We have nearly four hundred of you here in the stream. If you can hit the like button, please, as well, and subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, get, let's get it to a hundred likes. Can we? Can we get to hundred likes before they make it round to the uh, their grid spots? Uh, this happens all the way by. All the way round to turn 11, by the way. Uh, and Joe hasn't even got down to the first corner, which is interesting. Um, so, 
You're Japanese for it? Lovely, lovely. Good to see. Good. We're a very, we're a worldwide stream here. We are a worldwide stream. It's great to see people from all across the world in this stream. I absolutely love it. Having a look at my YouTube analytics afterwards to see where you guys are from in part of the world um, is, is is great to see. So yeah, a no, big thank you for everyone for tuning in as always. And yeah, the fact of it, we've got um, over 400 of you here before the race even starts um, is just... Um, yeah, it makes me really happy, guys, this early. It makes makes getting up at 5 o'clock in the morning um, worth it. So, yeah, let's let's see what we can do. My data is ahead of the TV. Ah, see, that's why you've got to watch this stream. You get the race here first more than anyone. So, um, you get it here faster than anyone. That's what I should have said. Um, no pun intended there with it being F1. So I'm actually going to just keep an eye out today, guys, on, I think, some uh, track limits as well off to the side. Because I think today we are going to... Spoon Corner is quite tricky. Um, we do normally see drivers get um, some track limits. So maybe, maybe there'll be some uh, penalties dished out today. <coughs> So we'll see. But yes, uh, DRS is activated after one lap. So as they're coming around to line up on the grid, let's run through this grid one more time. So we have Verstappen on pole position from his teammate Perez lining up alongside him. We have Lando Norris in the McLaren on the second row with Carlos Sainz. Fernando Alonso, the only driver starting on the soft compound tyre in the top 10. Keep an eye out for an aggressive start by the Aston Martin. Piastri in sixth. Hamilton in seventh. Leclerc in eighth. Not a good qualifying from him yesterday. George Russell in ninth. Yuki Tsunoda ahead of his teammate at his home circuit in 10th position. Ricardo in 11th. Hulkenberg 12th. Bottas 13th. Albon 14th. Ocon 15th. A poor qualifying from the Aston Martin. A stroll yesterday in 16th. Gasly 17th. Magnussen 18th. Sargent is 19th. And Guan Yu Zhou bringing up the rear of everyone there in 20th position. And we are only seconds away, guys, from the Japanese Grand Prix getting underway. Please hit that like button. Over 600 of you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Here we go, guys. They are lining up. And it will be lights on. And the Japanese Grand Prix is... Away we go as they head down into the first corner here. Is there going to be any side-by-side -side action? This corner is a double apex and we have seen incidents here in the past as it does seem Logan Sargent has lost a position there at the back of the grid and Verstappen holds onto his lead from his teammate into turn one. Ocon, a big gainer there at the start. The two Alpines up three positions as uh, Ricardo, Ricardo and Albon. Then there's a yellow. There's contact between Ricardo and Albon. Oh no, there's a yellow and this could be a very early safety car. At the start of this race, uh, Ricardo and Albon are not moving there in turns three in the S's. What has happened there? And this is a terrible start for Ricardo. And it is a red flag. We've got a red flag. Not even 30 seconds into this race. Oh, my God. I may go and grab myself another coffee because, wow, what has happened there? There are obviously cars on the circuit and I'm watching the TV coverage back of this race start to see exactly what happens. So as they head down into the first corner, Max Verstappen got a great start from his teammate. Carlos Sainz got up alongside Lando Norris. And of course, this it's very, very tricky, this first corner. Let's see exactly where the incident occurred. Oh, and Danny Ricciardo just... I so... I don't know if, so Albon is off into the tyre barrier on the right hand side of turn three there and I think Albon has tried to slide up the outside of Danny Ricciardo and Danny Ricciardo has a car on his inside um, and I think Danny Ricciardo might even be free wide and just closes, he just closes um, Albon off. I don't think he sees Albon coming on his outside and just sends Albon into the barrier and Danny Ricciardo is also out of this race and into the same barrier. Um, so, no, he's not into the same barrier, sorry. He's at, uh, Danny Ricciardo's further on, I think. They're both in tyre barriers, that's for sure. Or are they into the same one? I can't tell. No, they've both gone into the same barrier. <laughs> they've both gone into the same barrier. I think both drivers are okay. I think I think Alex Albon is a bit stuck. I think he has a load of tyres on top of him. 
Oh, look at that. That is service. Look at that. See, that's the benefit of having the missus away at this time in the morning, guys. What's that? <laughs> so, I think Alex Albon, is he out of the car yet? I can't tell. So the driver is okay. I think he's just got tires on top of him that he can't um, can't get off. But we have a red flag, guys. If you're just joining us early on in this race, not even 30 seconds into this race, um, as yes, it does. We're waiting for replays to, to double confirm my assumptions. You can only see it in the back, like in the in the top right corner of the TV screen. So we're having a look at the race start again now. So let's see exactly what happened. Alex Albon definitely tried to come up the outside. Of ter into turn three of Danny Ricardo, but whose fault is it? What did Danny Ricardo completely shut him off? Was he more worried about the car, a car on his inside? Trying to see here. Ah, oh, Danny Ricardo just doesn't see Alex Albon on his right hand side. I think, and just I think he's very wary of Lance Stroll coming up his inside, and need to see some on boards there. Um, the fault obviously is massively to blame on Danny Ricardo, and that is not not good for him. Uh, um, obviously, making improvements of his uh, in his qualifying is out before this race has even started, pretty much. So we're on board with Alex Albon. Um, let's see exactly how it looks from his onboard. So he's following Danny Ricardo here. Oh, and he just... Yeah, so, I mean, it's a tough one there. It's a tough one there, to be honest. Um, there is a little run. There is a little run that Albon gets from space on the outside there. It's very bold from Alex Albon, I must admit, because... When you're an F1 driver, obviously, the, the space, you see it. However, it's not really probably a viable overtaking move there into turn um, into turn three, where he was at this stage of the race. Yeah, he's just, he's looking in his left, he's looking in his left-hand mirror. He's not expecting Albon to come on his right-hand side there. Just moves over, and it's that split second. It's that split second but, um, of Lance Stroll that has spooked Danny Ricardo, and he doesn't expect Alex Albon to come up along his right-hand side. Morning, and Rory. Good to see you, mate. You're up early. Up before the, the boys are awake, yeah? Uh, boys are awake, yeah? <laughs> oh, I mean, to be honest, though, Danny Ricardo has massively overreacted there. He's massively overreacted. Mm, I mean, it's Danny Ricardo's fault. You, you, you have to. Yeah, it's Danny Ricardo's fault. You can't put blame anywhere else. However, um, it's he's just not expecting Alex Albon to drive up on his outside there. Really not. He's he's concentrating on on the Aston Martin, the quicker car, up on his inside, and he's just moved over and squeezed Alex Albon and didn't expect him there. Um, it's, do you know what? It's tough because I can only compare it to sim racing. And I've raced the, the, the F1 car here in, in, in iRacing. And you wouldn't expect anyone to be on your outside there. But you, you, you wouldn't, especially of how far he is. I still think it's very opportunistic from Alex Albon. And I'm not quite sure what he thinks he would have achieved there. I get when space opens up, you're going to go into it. But it's not really... Because he's then going to have to dramatically back out of turn four. Um, so, I, I I don't know. I, I need to see it again. I feel like I need an overhead shot and to slow it down. But yeah, that, that has brought out the red flag, guys. That has brought out the red flag. So, we are, um, at this moment in time, um, waiting for those guys to remove those cars safely and to repair that tyre barrier. It does seem to be that both Daniel Ricciardo was straight out of the car, but I think Alex Albon had the tyres fly up and land up on top of his car uh, on his cockpit, so they had to remove those uh, before they could get him out of the car safely. Um, I don't think it's going to be too long of a red flag, but that will give us a, another standing start here, guys, and um, effectively restart this race um, and yeah, we only have one official lap completed. Yeah, thank you, Rory. It's good to see these. Uh, I'm enjoying this. It makes getting up at 5 a.m. in the morning worthwhile. <laughs> so yeah, thanks, guys. If you could get it to over 100 likes, I mean, we nearly got a thousand of you in here. It's so early in the race already. Come on, let's get it to over a thousand likes. A uh, thousand likes? Uh, over 100 likes. Morning, Tom. Good to see you, mate. 
You can argue a case of both of them being at fault. Yeah, I think ultimately it, the, the blame lies on Danny Ricardo. It is more so a first lap racing incident. Um, he's just not expecting Alex Albon. He's just not expecting Alex Albon to come out on his on his outside there. Um, I, I I need I want to see Alex Albon's perspective again. I really want to do. It. I really want to see it again, or at least I want to see kind of a an overhead shot to to see exactly how close another car was behind him, um, because it's uh, yeah, it's not really a place that you would go for an overtake or be opportunistic to to, to try and go around the outside there. I get this space, and you kind of have to have to do that. Um, but Danny Ricardo is clearly not looking in his right hand mirror at that time, as you wouldn't. As you wouldn't, you'd be more focused on he's covering the middle of the track and then moves over to the right hand side as you do for turn four because he knows he's got an Aston Martin more so on his inside. Um, and he just doesn't expect to see Alex Albon, who's got great traction out of turn two, um, on his outside. So, yeah, but that's just such, such a real shame for Danny Ricardo, who the pressure is already massively on for um obviously his seat in the alpha tauri i'm calling them the alpha tauri i refuse to call them the v car whatever it is that, that they would like to refer themselves to um so yeah it's it's real unfortunate for him and gives yuki Sonoda another opportunity to put i'm saying we're gonna look at it again now hmm so we just so you see it from behind and you can see that Lance Stroll does get up alongside Danny Ricardo, but then Danny Ricardo gets better traction out of turn two because he is slightly ahead. So watch it from Alex Albon's on board again. Just seeing this again from Alex's perspective. So Yuki doesn't make a good start. Just look at this again. Mm. Yeah, I'm, uh, I don't know. It's a tough one. It is a real tough one. So let's have a look at it from Daniel's perspective again. The question is, is how far alongside Lance Stroll was alongside Danny Ricardo? Was it a warranted, like, was it warranted that Danny Ricardo was spooked? So he's looking right there and then he looks left. Yeah. So just... Just as he's moving over to the right-hand side, that split second just before he moves over to the right-hand side and then he collects Albon, he looks in his left left mirror and he's definitely concerned about Lance Stroll. So he's not he's not even looking at Alex Albon there. Not even concerned with him. So Danny Rick is coming back to the Red Bull Kart Racing team. Hmm. I I mean the, the the blame has to lie with, lie with Danny Ricardo. It is quite. It, it it's he does move over quite a lot which indicates that he just wasn't expecting Albon to be where he was um so we'll see but yeah guys what that has done has brought out the red flag and we are going to get a restart a standing restart and uh yeah because the race has been nullified and we've lost two cars from this race if it wasn't bad enough for of course Williams already the Williams um, of course, only has one spare chassis, and we have Logan Sargent as the sole remaining Williams driver in this race. And on the flip side, we have Yuki Tsunoda as well. Um, so Yuki made a very poor start, very poor start, but was late on the brakes down into turn one and got ahead of his teammate. Um, so turn two, involving incidents, involving um, Ricardo and Albon has been noted. I, I wonder if they'll proportion blame to Danny Ricardo there. It's definitely Danny Ricardo's fault. You, you can't deny that. Um, but yeah, I, I, I get why Albon was there. It's just, I don't know, bit of a nothing burger if you ask me. I just don't know if, what you're going to kind of gain around the outside there. You never really gain around the outside there into turn three. But hey-ho, hey-ho. Car behind has to be more aware Danny Rick was moving on to the racing line. Um, yes, however, he will argue that he's warranted space because he's got his front wheels alongside his rear wheels his rear axle uh, so that is why he will 
Alex Elbon will argue there that he shouldn't have just moved over. It was quite an aggressive move over to the outside line. You do have to expect as well um, when you're... I mean, Danny Ricciardo wouldn't, should know that there's, there's cars around him um, into turn... Um, into like the S's, but he's he's you see him look left, like visibly move his head left and see um, that he he's not got his eye on Albon whatsoever. So how far alongside was Albon? Um, he had his rear wheels alongside, just ahead of his. At the point he got squeezed, he had his rear wheels. Um, so had his front wheels just slightly ahead of um, Ricardo's rear wheels. Uh, but Ricardo doesn't even know he's there because he's focused on Stroll. So you'll see it, guys. You'll see it. But, um, let's check his mirrors, really. Album was there. Well, he did check his mirror. He did check his mirror. He, 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 looked, he looked in his left... He looked in his left-hand mirror because... When you look at it back, Albon does get great traction out of turn three. And Ricardo's not expecting for him to come up along his outside. Uh, because he's fighting the wheel. He's more focused on the Aston Martin who's on his outside. Like, on his... Outside in regards to... On his inside. I'm going to say Stroll on his inside going into turn three. And Albon on his outside. Because it's a, obviously you're going from a right-hander to a left-hander. Um... He doesn't expect Albon to make that headway because uh, he looks to his left visibly in his rearview mirror, then looks back and but it's all happening in the space of like a couple of seconds. And then, yeah, as he moves right, um, Albon goes. So there's a, there's a replay here of Charles Leclerc. What happened to Charles Leclerc? Okay, just, just a replay of, of Charles Leclerc's radio. I was like, don't. Don't tell me Charles Leclerc's had got damage or something. So. Hope Sonoda gets points. Yeah, Sonoda's going to be going like, ha yes. Sonoda's going to see this as an opportunity to get some points. He's... Sonoda didn't even say anything. They told him. They informed him. But um, <laughs> I don't think he even said anything. Um, so... Stroll didn't look like he was anywhere near him. No, he didn't, but he he was expecting... I think he was expecting Stroll maybe to be a little bit more up alongside him. Um, but his focus quite evidently was on Lance Stroll, not so much on Alex Albon, who kind of did the, the under the under move. He just got a great drive off of turn two. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's a tough one because he kind of went free wide into turn two. Then was the car ahead. Expected Lance Stroll to be the one who got the better traction, but actually it was Alex Albon. And yeah, um, being the car that was ahead, then just squeezed Alex Albon. So we'll see how the stewards view it. I think they'll probably just say it was a term lap one incident um, because of how of what's happening um, in the S's in the early stage of the race. Um, but yeah. I, I, I agree, Connor. I, I, we've, done enough, <laughs> we've done enough I racing... Uh, races in the F1 car to know that you don't gain anything, especially in the first lap from going on the outside of turn three there, even if you get traction, because the space just disappears when you head into turn um, turn four. So, yeah, I, I I think it was very opportunistic from Albon, and I think it's um, a poor move on his part. I get when you... Obviously, we're talking about split seconds here, and He's got great traction on the inside and he's seen himself gain, but on the car ahead. And you probably don't expect the driver to, to completely cut you off like that. But it, yeah, it's you very, very rarely gain anything from um, going up the outside of turn three there in the early stages of the race. So let's just move that. I'm going to have to move this out a bit because we will end up getting more, um, more pit stops at some point. So... Middle car free wide, yeah, exactly. It is such an eye racing scenario. <laughs> so race will resume, guys, at 32 minutes past the hour. So 12 minutes. We still got 12 minutes until the race starts. Again, that's a long time. That is a long time. So they've repaired that barrier. Yeah, it was just a tire barrier, so it didn't take too long for them to repair. Um, all the debris has been removed. Um, so guys, will get back in their cars. Interesting to see if anyone decides to put on fresh new tyres. 
Will we see guys put on fresh new tyres? We do have, of course, those guys who are a lap down. Uh, I say a lap down. The guys like towards the lower end of the grid, they do have new tyres, soft tyres available to them. I think the front of the grid will probably just stick on the tyres that they were on um, because they only did half a lap on them. So, man, uh, man, this was on Danny going so wide, then even more wide. Yeah, but he's the car ahead and he's in the middle. He was, he's in, he was in the middle and then he. Like, when you see it back on TV, the blame does lie on Danny, but you have to realise that situation is in there. You don't expect a car to come up on your outside. He's, he's, he definitely, he can't look in both mirrors the same time as in that short run. On that short run from turn two to three, to look left and right and then pick a line and then turn into the corner... You can't physically do it. You don't have enough time in an F1 car. So he focused on his left-hand side. And the peripheral vision that you get in these cars, the visibility is the worst that we've ever had in an F1 car. Um, and that's why you see more and more of these incidents happen since we've the cars have got bigger because the visibility is just not... The peripheral vision of these guys, they don't have a lot sitting in the cockpit. Um, so that's why we see more like guys cutting across others and that because they think they've cleared someone and or someone's not there and there is and it's just a case of that he chose to focus on his left on his inside which i think was the correct decision to do and yeah he's moved over to, to he's, he's definitely given stroll too much room if you ask me because stroll wasn't he's misjudged how far stroll was ahead but then he's also probably trying to maximize his entry um into turn three and yeah, he's um, he's obviously ran straight into uh, Williams, but he didn't expect to be there. So, when's this race going to resume, Joel? Uh, Thirty-two minutes past the hour, so nine minutes now. Bit of an odd time for them to do it, but yeah, 32 minutes past the hour, the race will resume. So, guys, thank you for being here. 1,300 of you in here already. Woo! Woo! So, thank you, guys. Hit the like button. Only 153 likes. Come on. Let's get to a thousand likes. Get, let's get to a thousand likes. <clears throat> so yeah, appreciate you being here as always, guys. Thanks to the returning viewers, and thank you to anyone who is new. If you haven't subscribed already, please do. We'll be back here again in a couple of weeks' time for China, where we have a sprint race. First time we head back to China since before COVID. So five years, five years ago we was at China. So I'm intrigued to see how that race pans out. It's always a good. Um, always been a good racing circuit for those of you who haven't experienced China and seen a race um, at the uh, Shanghai circuit. It is Shanghai, isn't it? The Shanghai circuit. Um, it always provides the term sector one, term one, two, three. Oh, great, great, great racing. Um, and there's always a bit of rain in China as well. Uh, we've seen um, some very interesting races there. It makes you feel old, Ben. I know, I know. Five years, well. Yeah, end of 2019, wasn't it? It was officially when it started getting about. Um, so, yeah, for five years since we went to China. Hey, Alex, Cam Cambodia. We are global. We are truly global. Good to see you, Kyan. Good to see you, mate. Wonder if Matt will go for hard, hard one stop now with two sets. Interesting. Yeah, we'll see if anyone does, does decide to do that. I think they'll try it with one driver, Connor. I think they'll try it with one driver. What have you got to lose when you're Mercedes? You know, what have you got to lose? I would probably do so. Try and go out the box. Mix it up a bit. <coughs> Singapore. Good to see you. Oz. But it gives, it gives Perez another opportunity, guys. This standing restart. Because Max, if you didn't see the start of the race, Max nailed the start. Um, and he just... Gave Perez no opportunity to get anywhere near near him into the first corner. So this gives everyone another opportunity um, at uh, nailing that start. Of course, the standing restart is the last thing Max Verstappen wants. He just wants to be able to get ahead and drive into the distance. Um, so, yeah, we'll see if Perez is able to, to give us a bit more drama. Will there be another incident? There's, high, there's a high possibility with 18 F1 cars still on this grid. But it to be... <coughs> another similar incident um into the center s's so let's see see what occurs first time watching miguel ah oh, good to see uh 
from Greece. Lovely, lovely. Why the red flag? So yes, so guys, if you're just joining, if you're just waking up for many of the UK viewers here, um, I'm sure you have. Um, there was a red flag at the start of this race, not even 30 seconds into this race, as Danny Ricardo made contact with Alex Albon heading into the center S's, and it took them both into the barrier. Um, and yeah, I, I'm putting it more towards a lap one racing incident. Um, and yeah, they will, um, unfortunately, they ended up in the barrier, and that is both of them out of this race. So a terrible start to this Grand Prix for Danny Ricardo um, after he had a decent qualifying and improved um, yesterday. Uh, and it's going to give um, Yuki Tsunoda uh, add another now to that coffin in, to his teammate, who is already under a lot of pressure. I imagine Helmut Marko will be straight in the media pen uh, or to the media's, uh, the reporters, after this race telling him, saying that he needs to do better um so yeah but the stewards are investigating that incident they said that they will investigate it after the race um so it's not obviously top priority for them at the moment with the race about to restart um in five less than five minutes time guys 32 minutes past the hour wherever you are in the world uh for time zone purposes <clears throat> i don't think so jewel no i don't think he has no I still think, uh, good to see you, Reggie. Good to see you, Nico. Um, I think he, um, I think he'll be given afforded a lot more of an opportunity and time than any other Red Bull driver would be, um, just because of who he is, because of his relationship with Christian Horner. Um, we know that there's already kind of a, a power struggle and dynamic um, at Red Bull at the moment. It's got a bit quiet there at the mo um, at the moment. But it's not been sorted by any means in regards to Helmut Marko and uh, the Mataschitz family and uh, Christian Horner. Um, so, yeah, I, I, it wouldn't surprise me if Christian Horner get, affords Danny Ricciardo a lot more time uh, than, than all the other junior drivers have been given that have come before him. So... People think Ricardo is better than Yuki or Delusional. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, yeah, I think at the moment, yeah, Danny Ricardo is is definitely not not performing um, to his standards. Uh, we had this discussion on stream yesterday. I actually think I just think he's a driver who who needs a good car underneath him. Um, I think he's very much a confidence driver, <coughs> um, and that Alpha Tower is not a Red Bull, um, so it's. He needs, he, he obviously jumped into that Red Bull, Max's Red Bull, I think it was at Silverstone last year or whoever's Red Bull it was uh, in that test and was on the pace pretty quickly because it's a very well performing car. It's the best performing car on the circuit. Um, and if he's in a car like that, he can, he can get it. Um, I still opportunistic from Albon there. I'm looking at that and I'm just thinking, even though you've got the traction, you just always back out there. Self-preservation always comes into mind um, when you're on the outside of turn three there. Surely you should have known he was three wide as well. But, but we probably, I think Albon probably didn't know he was three wide and thought he'd be afforded the space, but Ricardo was more focused on, on Lance Stroll, so... Um, yeah. But he obviously needs a car that's decent underneath him to, to, to drive well rather than a, uh, a car that's not, so... <clears throat> um, Albon, um, sorry, uh, Lawson will be in an F1 seat next year, that's for sure. He'll be in a seat, definitely. So, Right, drivers are back in their cars, guys, so they'll be coming out of the pit lane. Less than two minutes now until the race gets back underway. If you're just joining us, the race was given a red flag due to the uh, incident between Danny Ricciardo and Alex Albon crashing into the barrier at turn three. So after that has now been repaired, thankfully, nice and quick repair because it was just a tyre barrier. So they've got that back in shape. And yes, there is going to be a standing restart. So we don't know what tyres the drivers are going to have to put on their... Uh, we don't know what tyres the driver is going to come back out on. Of course, when there is a red flag, the rules state that the tyres can be completely changed um, so now they've technically these guys have run a single compound of tire this could potentially ruin any strategy that we was going to see here um, and we could see drivers who have got two hards available to them we'll see if they risk it and try and take the hard compound tire um, or two 
do a two stop on the hard compounds um, to the end of the race. Quite a tall order with Suzuka being a high loaded circuit, um, we will see, but I think it's probably worth the risk splitting strategies between the likes of the Mercedes team, potentially in the McLarens as well. Wonder if they'll split the strategy and see uh, and go down that route. Um, but yes, we won't find out until just a couple of more seconds when the tire blankets come off and they head um, out of the pit lane for another formation lap for this race restart. <clears throat> was 100% free wide? Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't like a conventional free wide where like they're all side by side. It was Danny Ricardo was slightly ahead. Lance Stroll was like on his left hand side, like front wheels to his rear axle. Alex Albon got the great drive on the inside, like the under. Um, so, yeah. Who's going to win? Well, potentially Max Verstappen. Yeah, I think he got a great start, of course, down into turn one um, on the initial start of this race. But this gives and this adds another variable into the race. It gives Perez. Norris signs another opportunity to get a decent start and gain a position or so down into the first corner. So here we go. Cars are coming out of the pit lane. I'll have a swig of my coffee before we head um, round to the grid for this first start. So you can see there lots of drivers putting on a brand new set of medium compound tyres. So you can see that Verstappen and Perez have kept the medium compound tire on norris has kept it on as well um so <coughs> sorry um this indicates that they're using the same tire sorry so where it's got one alongside it it means they're using the same tire so the mercedes wow both mercedes both mercedes have gone to the hard compound tire they're not even going split strategy they are mixing it up they're trying something different here already used the one compound tire uh, already used two compounds of tyre in effect now that is um, indicated in the rules by the FIA. You have to use two different tyre compounds throughout a uh, Grand Prix distance. And well, yes, um, they have two brand new hard tyres available for them. This could be a masterstroke for the Mercedes drivers. This could fall into their hands. The Mercedes hasn't been too poor here um, in practice over the weekend. So we'll see. Um, the only other drivers who had two new hards available to them um, in the top 10 were the, the McLarens. So everyone else has uh, medium compound tyres available. Um, so yeah, wow. Ocon and Gasly, uh, the Alpines going down that route as well. Logan Sargent going onto the hard compound tyre. So a few there going outside the box and this is going to be intriguing. This is going to be intriguing, guys. Leclerc is on a brand new set of medium compound tyres as well. So is Carlos Sainz. So getting off of those used mediums, which is potentially what they started on. Um, Guan Yu Zhou is on a brand new set of softs. So is Lance Stroll. Yuki Tsunoda has gone on to a set of softs off of his medium compound tyres. Woo! This is going to be interesting, guys. This is going to be interesting. So can Mercedes take those hard compound tyres? Can they do a two-stop now? Um, in effect, a one-stop. This is effectively what this race has become, a 51-lap uh, one-stop race. So let's see. So let's have a check of the grid. I don't think there was really any changes in position. Well, there was a few changes in position, more so down the back of the grid. So if you're just joining us, thank you for joining. Hit the like button. Let's get to over 500 likes um, before the race starts, if we can. Nearly 2,000 of you in here. So we have a Verstappen on P1, Perez P2, Norris third, Sainz fourth, Alonso fifth, Piastri sixth, Hamilton on the hard compound tyres now in seventh, Leclerc eighth, Russell also on the hard compound tyres in 9th. Hulkenberg up two positions into P10. Bottas up two positions in P11. Ocon up two posi three positions in 12th. Why is Yuki Tsunoda falling back through the grid there? Um, he is actually down. Yuki Tsunoda come into the pit lane. I think Yuki Tsunoda and Lance Stroll have come into the pit lane there. What is... A... That's got to be an issue, I think, with the timing sheet. But um, everyone's gridded up. Everyone is gridded up here. I'm not entirely sure why they've fallen to the back of the grid there. Um, but here we go, guys. The cars are lined up. We have our second start of this race. Let's go racing. It'll be lights out. And away we go as they head down into the first corner for the second time from a standing position. Max Verstappen 
has got a good start, but it does seem to be that Perez got a better one than he did first time around. Hamilton on the hard compound tyres has made a much better start and gained a position on Leclerc. But of course, we've seen incidents here already into the centre races, but Verstappen holds off Perez as they head through turns five and six. Then through the fast left-hander of Dunlop Curb, then under the bridge through the Degners. So Verstappen, importantly there, holds off his teammate Perez, who got a much better start second time around. And Norris also holds off Carlos Sainz as well in P4. Fernando Alonso, the only driver in the top 10 to be starting on the soft compound tyre, still in fifth place with Piastri close behind. Leclerc has regained that position back from Hamilton, and now it's the two Mercedes drivers who are side by side. Ocon is up five positions in this race, guys, into P10. Uh, Bottas doing, going well in P11. Also, Gasly in P12 on the hard compound tyres. And then I'm not entirely sure what happens, but it does seem to be that Sonoda and Stroll um, are further down the grid there than it would like. And no, now, now the timing sheet has updated, but um, Yuki Sonoda is indicating that he's down a lap. That's not right, is it? Surely, that's not right. Well, um, we'll see if that is the case. It is indicating that Sargent is at the back of the grid there. No, Yuki Sonoda Sonoda is right behind Lewis Hamilton. Lewis Hamilton is split um, by um, Yuki Sonoda there and George Russell. So I'm not entirely sure what is happening with the timing sheets for you Yuki fans. He is not in 18th position. He is indeed actually in 9th position, splitting the two Mercedes drivers at the moment as he is on the soft compound tyre. There we go. It's updated itself. On the soft compound tyre, Yuki getting bullshit here. I wouldn't surprise to see Yuki try and get past Lewis Hamilton, potentially, with that tyre difference. But we see we've now had a full racing lap completed, guys. Woohoo! Um, as Verstappen is your leader with just under a second from Sergio Perez. Now, DRS is only at, is activated now. We don't have to wait two laps anymore. We only have to wait the one. And that should provide us some better racing. But Verstappen is already pulling out a gap to his teammates. It's important for Perez here for us uh, for us wanting a fight up front uh, for him to stay within that DRS. But you can already see that there's a gap forming between Verstappen and Perez, those two Red Bulls on the McLaren of Lando Norris. We can see signs there in the DRS as well of Lando. Um, and yeah, we'll see if these Red Bulls are just going to stay Pull away here. I think, as expected, they've been the, quite evidently the fastest team and the two fastest drivers all over the weekend. Qualifying definitely indicated that as well. Um, but you can see there, uh, as we make our way down through the grid, that um, it is um, a kind of holding stations, really, behind the two Red Bulls down to Lewis Hamilton. George Russell cannot get past Yuki Tsunoda, who is on the set of soft compound tyres, but Russell on a completely different strategy, trying to take these hard compound tyres a lot longer than Yuki will be on a set of used softs. So it wouldn't surprise me if uh, Yuki potentially uh, is told by his team not to fight too hard from the Mercedes of George Russell because really that's not his race today. That isn't his race, especially at this stage uh, of the race also. Ocon and Bottas there in 11th and 12th. Wow, who would have thought we'd see... Um, a uh, Alpine up in P11 as George Russell with the DRS gets past Yuki Tsunoda down into turn one. So, yes, a nice easy overtake there for the Mercedes of Russell. And, yeah, Yuki just needs to focus on staying ahead of Bottas, who just got past the Alpine. So Bottas, who has always gone well here at Suzuka, a favourite track of his, is doing really well in that stake F1 car, as he did in qualifying yesterday, he is now in P11. Lance Stroll up into 13th on their set of soft tyres. Where is he at the moment? He is on the back of Ocon. We can see there that Guan Yu Zhou is close behind Magnussen. And then Sargent is actually starting to lose uh, on the hard compound tyre. A bit of a different strategy for him, but he's starting to lose um, the toe of Hulkenberg there. He really needs to get back within the DRS. But you can see Verstappen and Perez. Um, Perez just outside the DRS of Verstappen, um, who was just a tenth faster than his teammate last time around. Um, but they are focusing on pulling a gap from Lando Norris. Carlos Sainz, Alonso, Piastri, Leclerc, Hamilton trying to stay with Leclerc there. But you can see that the top 10 down to Bottas, not one driver within the DRS there, as it is Bottas who is the first driver 
on that grid um, who is who has got DRS. As Lance Stroll is tucked up behind Esteban Ocon here as he goes through 130R into the chicane. He's going to be lining him up surely for an overtake down into turn one with DRS activated. Let's see if that is the case. As Alonso does sneak into DRS there in under the braking into the bus stop and got the DRS of Carlos Sainz. He's on the medium uh, on the soft compound tire as Hulkenberg decides to dive in and get off those soft tires immediately pretty much only a couple of laps on those softs and we'll see what tire he comes out on probably just to get some clean air and this could be um, a great move by the uh, Haas strategy team here guys um, as he gets into some clean air and could be a dramatic undercut by um, the Haas team so um, Lance Stroll did get past Esteban Ocon there down into turn one so he now has his uh, target site set on Bottas there who is chasing down and closing Yuki Tsunoda go on Bottas go on the boy <coughs> why am I looking like Lando's brother I'm uh, I'm Lando's better looking older brother <laughs> Uh, uh, but yeah, no, thank you guys for tuning in to this Japanese Grand Prix, the fifth ra fourth ra fourth, fourth race in a row. But we have got over 2,500 viewers, so much appreciated, guys, for you tuning back in and continuing to build a great community we have here. But while I've been thanking you guys, Perez has lost another second there from a mistake to Verstappen. And um, you can see there that that gap has now gone from just over a second to two seconds. So Sergio Perez there has had an issue somewhere. He went very wide under the um, under the bridge through the second degna, which is turn nine. Um, so that compromised then him into the hairpin and he lost quite, he's lost quite a bit of time there, Sergio Perez, to his teammates. And uh, that's not ideal. That is not ideal for Perez whatsoever, but thankfully for him, um, so Norris was not that close behind. And um, on my track limit violations, Perez has picked up a track limit um, for that um, off track at turn nine. So yeah, um, took a big hit there to the underfloor and had to lift off throttle. And that's why Verstappen was just able to gain an, a full second on Sergio last time around. You can see the last lap there, 36.8 to a 37.6. So Norris starting to pull out a bit of a gap to Carlos Sainz, it seems. 1.7 seconds ahead of the Ferrari driver. And Alonso is 1.3 seconds behind Carlos Sainz as well on the softs. Remember, it's about it's around lap 10 to 15 is what Pirelli suggested was going to be the pit window for the soft compound tyre. The medium compound was around uh, 20, lap 20, I think it was. Lap 18 to 22, something around that. So keep an eye out. Um, in regards to laps completed for when those drivers decide to come in. Um, but Hulkenberg there going very well um, at the back. Bottas has kind of responded. Uh, the Stake F1 team have responded to the charging Haas driver um, as he set a pur purple last sector last time around on a fresh set of hard compound tyres. So the undercut does look to be quite, quite powerful here as Hulkenberg was... When he pitted, Hulkenberg was about five positions behind Bottas. And now look at him. He's right behind. I don't know if Stake F1 had a slow pit stop, which seems to be kind of their pattern um, this year um, thus far. So, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Yuki on softs can't catch those mercs. No, well, the fall off and Yuki is into the pit lane. So, yeah, the fall off of the soft compound tire, I think, is a lot, is a lot bigger is a lot bigger than uh, maybe anticipated. Um, and he did start on a used set of softs anyway. So that's why he's not been able to catch up, uh, keep a hold of the Mercs. Look, there's there's a pace difference. The Mercs actually aren't too bad here this week compared to the McLarens and the Ferraris. Of course, the Red Bulls in a league of their own. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's um, to ask the Alpha Tauri, that's what I'm calling them. And I refuse to call them V-Carb, um, and I'll be referring to them as for the rest of the season. Um, it's a tall order for him to, even with a tyre difference, to, to, to stay with the Mercedes team. So, um, But yeah, no, good for him. He's come out. Um, well, he's actually lost a position to Bottas. That undercut by the, um, by the Stake F1 team has done wonders there for Bottas because he's got ahead of Yuki Tsunoda, and Hulkenberg will be looking at the back of the Yuki's rear wing now and so unfortunately Yuki Tsunoda has lost out on a position there to the Stake F1 team who have done wonders there with Bottas by bringing him in uh, just a couple of laps earlier 
And uh, yeah, Bottas is now ahead of Yuki. So we'll see if Yuki on a um, lap younger set of hard tyres will be able to close that gap on Bottas. So we'll keep an eye out on that. Guan Yu Zhou also has come into the pits and is out now. Um, he is down in P18. But you can see Leclerc has closed the gap on Piastri. And you can see that Sainz is also closing the gap on Norris as well. So the two McLaren drivers do look to be a little bit vulnerable it seems as the ferrari drivers are starting to get a move on and um, that's what it looks like to me as signs is just outside of the drs of norris he was um it was around a one second mark as he headed down into turn one of course with the dirty air that's given off by these cars through the tight twisty first sector uh, which is the center s's um you can see them uh, struggle the the following car struggle for a bit of grip as the interval goes out a little bit guys um so yeah we'll see if the claire is able to stay close um yeah and carlos signs reporting that you can see lando is struggling a bit so he'll be able to see the rear of that mclaren sliding around just a little bit um of course the spoon corner in particular where you need the front of the car very high loaded corner there and you can see leclerc's really closed up the gap the traction he got out of the hairpin at turn 11 was tremendous and he might actually have a run on piastri as they head down full throttle out of spoon corner all the way through 130r and into the into the uh, turn 16 chicane he's all going to be all about lining this up he will have drs as they head down into turn one carlos signs is just with just outside of that drs at lando he can't just close up the gap for now but let's see if piastri will be able to hold off a charging charles leclerc here um as they head down into turn one he will have the drs <coughs> Here we go. He's got it open, but I think Piastri is still, still, get, I think um, he's been very fortunate there. Piastri as Alonso starting to struggle on those soft compound tires. He's done nine laps on them now. And uh, Piastri saving grace there, I think, was that um, Alonso starting to struggle and brought him into the DRS also. As you can see there, the interval time is highlighted with Piastri and Leclerc indicating that they're within that one second range and will have DRS. So Piastri, Saving grace is Alonso at the moment, but I think it's only a matter of time before Leclerc overtakes the McLaren of Piastri. Lando just doing enough to hold off Signs at the moment. Maybe Signs is not thinking about going on the attack. We'll see. But up front, Verstappen has extended his lead over his teammate Perez, who does seem to be struggling a little bit maybe on his tyres now. 37-8 last time around to his teammate, who was seven tenths quicker um, in P1. So he has now got that gap to 3.2 seconds from his teammate. The Red Bulls do look quite comfortable, though. Nothing troubling them at the moment from behind. Hamilton and Russell, of course, running a completely separate race. They'll be going long. They're not thinking about attacking those drivers ahead of them because they're on a completely different strategy and their race is going to be um, coming at the end. George Russell is reporting he's getting a lot of vibrations through the steering wheel, though. Um, and they're reporting they're looking at the data. So we will see. But let's have a little run through the grid. Um, well, I'll say I'll have a little run through the grid. Let's just keep an eye on Leclerc and Piastri as they head down into T1 once again. So Piastri doesn't have the DRS from Alonso. But I think he's just close enough that he'll be getting the toe from Alonso down into T1. Will Leclerc go for a bold mood at uh, bold move, sorry, not mood, at this early stage in the race? No, no. But um, surely Alonso. We'll see how Alonso's going quite nicely on those soft compound tyres. We'll see see if he takes those any longer. Um, so um, the other drivers that further down the grid came off those tyres quite early as Gasly has uh, lost a position there to Logan Sargent, of all people. Woo! For you Logan fans out there, woo! Hey, Kako, good to see you, buddy. <clears throat> Apologies, I'm not keeping up with chat. It's going very quick, and I'm trying to provide all the information and commentary for you guys. So uh, if you could hit the like button, it'd be much appreciated. If we could get this stream to over a 1,000 likes, that'd be amazing. My first 1,000 likes stream. Go on, guys. You can do it. You can do it. There's free, just under 3,000 of you in here. That's, that's uh, not even half of you liking the stream. So Hamilton's uh, Bono reporting to um, Hamilton that they are seeing high deck on the medium runners. So, yeah, I mean, the Mercedes, this could work out very well for the Mercedes today. They could get a podium position. I'm not so sure about fighting for the lead. The, Mercedes, uh, the Red Bulls are very, very quick. Uh, I don't think they'd be able to even handle fighting the uh, Red Bulls um, if they got ahead of them at a later stage in the race. Um, 
So let's see. So Piastri, uh, Norris into the pits. Norris into the pits there. So he's only lasted 10 laps on the mediums. <clears throat> Surely, what, what, uh, what tyre is he going to come out on? He, he does have two set of hard compound tyres available with the McLaren. So they'll probably come out on the hards and see the hard compound tyre to the end. <clears throat> So that's promoted Lance Stroll up into P9 there, you can see. So Lance Stroll, the uh, Aston Martin is going quite well on a soft compound tyre compared to the McLarens on the mediums, it seems. Alonso actually putting away from Piastri, which is uh, which is quite intriguing. Um, maybe Piastri is driving in his mirrors a little bit, having a look at Leclerc. The Mercedes going along quite nicely, just doing level 39s. Um, Signs. So Signs has clean air now. Let's see if Signs is able to close the gap on his teammate. Uh, on his teammate. Um, on Perez. Let's see if he's able to close the gap on Perez. So they were lapping. They both did a 38-2 last time around. Let's see if he's able to close that gap now. He's got clean air ahead of him. Interesting. So Norris came out ahead of Ocon. A nice little gap for him. He is now on the hard compound tyres as... We expected with two of them available to them. Uh, Gasly came out just ahead of Bottas there with Yuki close behind now. So Yuki's pulled away from the hearts of Nico Hulkenberg. But it's not ideal for Yuki because he's being held up by <coughs> arguably you could say two slower cars. Um, the Stake F1 car of Bottas and the Alpine of Gasly. Uh, Gasly really struggling now on that hard compound tyre, it seems, uh, as Bottas is going to get him on the exit of Spoon as they head on in the run-up to 130R. Is he going to go side-by-side side through 130R or is he going to wait? But Yuki Tsunoda could potentially pounce here as they head into that chicane as Piastri also comes into the pit lane as well. And Gasly, Bottas may be a little bit, a little bit cautious there. Lance Stroll coming into the pits as well. Um, a little bit cautious there, uh, but maybe Bottas just waiting for that DRS as they head down into turn one. Let's see if there's going to be some drama here with three cars closely together as they head down into turn one. Is Yuki Tsunoda also going to take advantage here and make a move on the outside of the Alpine? He's definitely thinking about it. As you can see, Gasly struggling there for traction, but it does seem to be that Ga uh, Gasly just holds off Yuki for a bit longer, and that's not ideal for Yuki because... He now might not be able to overtake Gasly until they get round two, at least a hairpin. That's half a lap. Oh, no, Yuki, go on, the boy. Yuki gets the move done with that extra grip of the struggling Gasly through the center S's. That is a great move. You don't often see overtakes round there unless you have a severe grip advantage. So Yuki making short work of the struggling Gasly there, and he is now going to be focused on the back of that stake f1 driver of bottas um so yeah great great move there i thought he'd be stuck behind gasly at least until maybe the exit of the hairpin but got the move done nice and early with the extra grip that must be uh that must look, must look quite nice on tv let's have a let's have a little look back at that they're actually showing the coverage now so let's have a look and see how we got that move done gasly was struggling And they've actually gone away from it. They switched away from it just as he is about to get the move done. Terrible TV direction. They switched to George Russell because Lewis Hamilton said, should I let George Russell buy? And there was literally no response from the Mercedes pit wall. Ah, oh, you TV direction. Terrible, terrible. Guan Yu Zhou got an issue. Um, potentially, yes, potentially, as he's come into the pit lane. Um, yeah, that's not going to be good for the stake driver is it or stake team as uh, Lance Stroll onto the medium compound tire down in 17th Gasly um is just dropping back dropping dropping back I don't know what the Alpine Alpine team is really looking to gain there as Piastri comes out behind Magnussen oh not good for him as Alonso did get ahead of Magnussen there and is out on the medium compound tires um, Signs cannot keep pace with the Red Bull of Sergio Perez. He's starting to drop back a little bit. Uh, maybe maybe into a tyre saving stage of this race. But it does seem like Guan Yu Zhou has an issue and could be potentially retiring from this race. Could Checo's strategy be tyre preservation? This given his almost four seconds gap worth signs and no need to increase pace. Uh, probably. Yeah, probably, Tama. Yeah, probably. There's still always potential at Suzuka for there to be a safety car later on in the race. Um, 
I think at the moment, um, I mean, it's quite evident that Max has the pace over Perez anyway. Uh, Perez, yeah, they have to retire the car. Guan Yuzhou has a gearbox issue, so we have lost a third driver of this race, guys, with Guan Yuzhou having to retire due to a gearbox issue. Um, so for you um, Chinese fans out there, unfortunately, your sole driver on the grid will have to wait for a couple of weeks' time to get back out there. So now they're showing Yuki's um, overtake on Gasly through the center S's. Uh, let's see how he got it done. And, ah, oh, what a move from Yuki. So, so close. Got it done. That extra grip round the outside and was a great move by him. So Piastri did a great move up the inside of Magnussen into the hairpin um, as I've been focusing elsewhere. And he will now be focusing on Alonso, who is on a different strategy, who is on the medium compound tyre. So Norris flying at the moment on a new set of hards. He is catching up to the back of Lewis Hamilton, who has let George Russell through. Um, he's now in P5. So <coughs> interesting there. Varying strategies from Russell and Hamilton. Um, of course, Russell now the lead driver in this, uh, in this team, isn't he, to be honest with you? We knew it was going to happen at some point, but was it going to happen at this stage of the season already? Uh, only four races in, uh, but we'll see if it remains that way when we come to the end of the race. But they're clear they're going along nicely on a set of mediums in P4. You can see signs there. So signs actually just going along nicely. Both signs and the clear lap in 38.5. So they're just trying to take these medium compound tires, I think, as long as possible. They don't have a set of hard compound tires available. Uh, they only have one set of hard compound tires available to them compared to the Mercedes and the McLarens who have two. So it could be a detriment to them um, throughout this race. As Perez and Signs come into the pits uh, to get off those medium compounds and will most likely go on to their second set of mediums or maybe a set of hards for this middle stint. Let's see what they come out on. Sergeant <clears throat> in P11. Yeah, well, he's... he's he is and he isn't in P. Well, I say that. Um, he isn't in P11. He's the only driver he's really ahead of there is Ocon and Gasly. They're the only two drivers he's really ahead of because once he makes a pit stop, he'll be behind them. But um, yeah, I have to give credit where it's due. He has made a couple of overtakes out on track, being the sole remaining Williams driver. Of course, spinning it in, um, spinning it in practice was not, not great for him. <coughs> Um, but yeah, Hamilton is now got uh, Norris all over the back of him. It's going to be a matter of time with a 10 lap difference um, in life there on those tyres. So uh, we'll see how hard Lewis fights this. Uh, we are at the moment kind of in uh, drivers have made their first pit stops. So Perez has come out on a second set of mediums. So they're going to be holding on to that set of hards for the um, last stint in the race. Science has gone on to a second set of mediums as well. So we'll see if Signs maybe. Let's see now in this middle stint. Let's see if Signs decides to uh, close the gap to Perez. Now is Lewis Hamilton going to try and play the teammate role here and hold up Norris as much as possible? I don't think he's going to have much of an opportunity to stop a charging Lando Norris. But if he can do, um, maybe it will give a bit of breathing space to his teammate George Russell and potentially, of course, bring in Sergio Perez into play, who is not far off the back of him. But I think this will be a bit of a formality as they head down into T1, DRS open sometimes. And Verstappen, Verstappen pitting, and he's going to come out right in the middle of this fight here. Um, and, oh, just gets ahead. But Lando Norris, the undercut, working an absolute treat at the moment. The undercut, very powerful, as Norris is now up behind Verstappen, who has come out on a set of medium tyres and will have to overtake that of George Russell. You'll think he'll make quick work of it, and he does. Wow. <laughs> wow, that took all of, like, three corners um, for Max to then get back park past George Russell uh, from a charging McLaren. Um, but, wow, that undercut has worked an absolute treat for the McLarens. An absolute treat with another set of hard compound tyres available to them um, where they could potentially run a bit longer. Um, the latter stages of this race, while the while the Red Bull does have the pace, guys, I wonder if... I wonder if Max might actually have to make an overtake at the end of this race because Max is going to have to pit early. Max is going to have to pit earlier than Lando, you would think on the set of medium compound tires so i mean he's going to make quick work here of george russell um as they head through 130r maybe he's just patient and uh waits for the drs down into turn one i think that is the case but 
Guys, your eyes are not deceiving you. Charles Leclerc is leading the Japanese Grand Prix. <laughs> Guys, nearly 4,000 of you in here. We've just hit another PB of viewers. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, these watch alongs just keep growing and getting better and better. Hit the subscribe button if you can. We are not far away from hitting 20,000 subscribers. And if you could get the stream to 1,000 likes, come on, hit the like button. It really helps build this great community we've got here, guys. Um, so I'll try my best, of course, to keep up to date with the chat. But at the moment, there seems to be quite a bit going on. And I'm doing my best to provide you guys with the commentary and information. But I can, uh, for those of you I know, don't have a lot of access to, um, to F1 coverage around the world. So... Nando made quick work of George Russell, and we now, do we have a race on with non Lando on Max? <coughs> so Sergio Perez went side by side with Lewis Hamilton um, through 130R, and well, with the extra um, grip that he has with the medium compound tyres, made that move stick. Of course, 130R, almost not like a corner anymore, and... He's definitely going to get the move done as they head down into turn 13 here. Spoon corner. Um, is he going to have the move done? No, no. But you suspect with the medium compound tyre, he will have better grip on the exit of Spoon corner and do exactly what he just did to the Mercedes of Lewis Hamilton, who will be under attack from Carlos Sainz pretty soon as well. For you Mercedes fans out there, the Mercedes drivers are on different strategies compared to the rest of the field where they made the opportunity of that free kind of pit stop really at the start of the race to use two hard compound tyres that they have available to them, whereas everyone's decided to stick to their initial strategy and keep the tyre they started the race on before the red flag. Um, whereas they decided to change as the red flag allows you to do. So Verstappen in P net P1 um, technically, as Charles Leclerc trying to take this um, first stint as long as possible on the medium compound tyre, uh, Verstappen will be on the back of him uh, very, very quickly. A second difference in pace at the moment uh, with Verstappen on brand new medium compounds compared to Leclerc who has 17 lap old hard tyre, uh, medium tyres. We have Lando on a set of seven lap old hard compounds in P3. The undercut worked an absolute treat for him as he's been able to get ahead of Perez um, and close the gap up to Verstappen. Um, we have um, so we have Russell in P5 and Hamilton in P6, who are 17 laps on the hard compounds. Uh, Signs will have Hamilton very soon, though, as he's on the brand new set of mediums. Alonso down there in P8, Piastri uh, languishing a little bit behind in P9 as he got stuck behind uh, Magnussen in a bit of traffic. Um, not great pit stop really from the McLarens, it seems. And then we have Magnussen in P10 at the moment. The Haas dragging, dragging its heels really with uh, 17 lap old mediums. The only other driver out there on that, that older uh, medium compound tyres is Charles Leclerc at the moment. Um, Hamilton reporting, these tyres are dropping. Front right is dead. Oh, that's not good, is it? If you're going to try and do a two-stop race, um, we, well, just a in essence, a one-stop race with the hard compound tyre um, because they only had that one lap on the mediums. Um, but yeah, Magnussen there, all aboard the Magnussen trainers. We have Bottas. Sargent has done a great job, by the way, thus far. Um, credit where it's due. Um, extending this stint on the hard compound tyre. Um, he is just ahead of Yuki Tsunoda at the moment, who will probably have him, though, uh, with a difference in Delta there. He'll have DRS as they head down into Turn 1. Lance Stroll. Four weekend from him thus far, still down in 14th position. Hulkenberg 15th, and then the two Alpines, where we expect to see them uh, fighting it out for 16th and 7th. Uh, no, not fighting out for 16th and 17th, sorry. Um, as Gasly is just pitted and he's uh, down in 17th place. Although I say that, Ocon's coming to the pits now, so maybe Gasly and Ocon might, uh, might go side by side down into turn, um, turn one. <clears throat> Um, but yeah, Science has got past Lewis, uh, Lewis Hamilton as we expected and is already eyeing up George Russell. Verstappen is on the back of Charles Leclerc who is just trying to eke out these medium compounds as long as possible here. Um, Verstappen will overtake him as quick as possible. Uh, will overtake him pretty quickly, you'd imagine. Um, but Science and Hamilton went side by side um, as they went through uh, into Spoon Corner. So um, Hamilton not giving it up. He isn't giving it up. He's kind of being, he's kind of letting letting them have room. 
Um, but he's not going to let him have it easy. So let's keep an eye out on Verstappen. He has not been able to get the move done through 130R as Charles Leclerc. Um, is he going to dive into the pit lane? No, Charles Leclerc stays out for another lap. But Verstappen with DRS open, can't imagine Charles is going to fight this too hard as they head down into the first corner and Max gets the move done before they even hit the apex. As expected with, um, of course, a very, very different... Um, I mean, Leclerc's got... a. a is losing a second a lap on Verstappen at the moment, of course, with it just not being that Ferrari, not being as quick as the Ferrari, um, as the Red Bull, and of course a tire difference there as well. 19 laps now, the Claire will have completed on these mediums um, when he crosses the start finish line again. So Lando in P3 going quite well. He is being closed though by Perez, who is on a set of mediums. Signs, is he going to have a go? at uh, Russell down into the hairpin like he did at Hamilton who is now being closed down by Fernando Alonso there's um let's see if uh, Alonso of course no love lost between Hamilton and Alonso we've seen some great fights over the years between those two this will allow Piastri to close up the gap as well but let's see signs not able to get the traction but he did on Lewis Hamilton. Um, we'll see if George Russell is as kind as Lewis in letting Signs through. But you can see there, Signs all over the rear wing of George Russell and actually gets the move done into Spoon Corner before before they get into Spoon Corner. Um, George Russell will get a toe, but he won't have the rear traction really to stay with Signs out of turn 14. Um, but Alonso. Definitely has rear traction. Uh, rear traction. Uh, Hamilton reporting, we need to change this strategy. Um, and reporting, and Bono reported back that they're waiting for a pit window. They're waiting for a pit window at the moment um, as Hamilton is just coming under attack from everyone. He's going to lose a position here again to Fernando Alonso and very quickly Piastri as well. Um, Leclerc needs to pit. Um, not really. He's trying to take these tyres as long as possible um, because he only has a set of medium compound tyres and a set of hards. So the longer he can take this first stint on the mediums, the better for him, really, um, because he'll have fresher rubber um, come towards the end of the race. It will be very strong at the end of this race. Maybe he's even trying to... I don't think a one-stop is viable here today. The hard compound tyre is falling off too quickly. Um, very high loaded circuit, Suzuka. Um, so yeah, we'll see. We'll see what the strategy that is there from Ferrari. They're splitting the strategy quite evidently was between Sainz and Leclerc. But Leclerc is going to be very strong in the latter stages of this race, um, which will be good for us viewers because that's what we want to see. We want to see some on track action. No, <laughs> another idiotic strategy by Mercedes. Um. I don't think it's an idiotic strategy. I think they had to try something outside the box. Um, they know they don't really have a racy car. They don't have the pace on the Ferraris and the, the, Mercedes and the, the McLaren. So they had to try something different. Um, if they try and go like for like strategy with them, I think they just would have finished. They would have finished where they started. Um, so they got presented an opportunity and they've decided to give it a go, which is, which is by the way, against type for mercedes mercedes have always been very risk averse um, as perez has now got the move done on lando norris uh, obviously a very big tire difference there um track limits for lando through turn nine under the bridge um and then perez yeah now has his sights set on the clear um as russell comes into the pits first so russell being the Leading Mercedes driver comes into the pit lane and is coming off of those hard compound tires um but yeah they have to uh, They've always been very risk averse Mercedes and it's nice to see them actually try something outside of the box. They have to um, when they haven't got the quickest car. You need to try and make up positions when uh, an opportunity is presented to you and the red, the red uh, flag gave that to them. As we see Yuki come into the pit lane as well. Stroll come into the pit lane. Bottas, Magnussen, that whole train there of coming to the pit lane. It is going to be all down to the guys in the pit box. Who gets them out first? And they are, oh my God, it's all very, very close here. Are there any unsafe releases as they all trundle down the pit lane there? This, is, this could be carnage down into P1 as Yuki has come out ahead of that train great great work by the alpha tari pit box as yuki has jumped four positions there i'm pretty sure of it up into p11 oh my god i'd love to see that on the tv coverage but he's just gained three or four positions there i'm pretty sure of it in the pit box wow wow what 
What? <clears throat> I'm, come on, TV coverage. Cash up, cash up. I want to see what's happening. I want to see what's happening in that pit box. That was absolutely crazy as Yuki is now at the front of this pack and is only one position away from getting points at his home Grand Prix as Hamilton now comes into the pit lane as well to get off that set of hard compound tyres. George Russell puts on that second set of hards that are available to them. And that was great to see. There was five cars, five cars coming out of the pit lane there and the TV direction missed it. They missed them going into the pit box. What is the TV direction doing here this weekend? I am so glad I watch F1 now through the track map and with you guys because that was her How have they missed five cars coming into the pit box at the same time? Ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. We, we completely missed that. But now that gives Yuki a bit of clean air. But he does have Aston Martin of Lance Stroll close behind him. And Lance Stroll, pit lane infringement. I told you it was very tight there. Lance Stroll, pit lane infringement is being investigated um, as Magnussen gets ahead of uh, Esteban Ocon there um, down into turn one. And Yuki holding off the charging Aston Martin of Lance Stroll, who potentially could get a penalty. Yet, still yet, to see a replay of that actual pit lane carnage that we just saw um, as Perez is closing the gap on the Claire. Um, but wow, 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 that was that was absolutely crazy. I saw it on the track map. I knew that was going to be. I knew that was going to be crazy. Um, but yeah, guys, thank you very much to the. So here we go. Now they're showing a replay of it, and Yuki came was in behind Bottas. Ah, oh, so Stake F1 had a slow pit stop. Bottas lost two positions in the pit box. And Lance Stroll. Oh, was that an unsafe? Was that an unsafe pit release? But Yuki Sonoda, yeah, made up made up two positions or three positions there from his pit box. So well done, the Alpha Tari pit team because that was um that was a tremendous job by them right guys so let's have a little um let's have a little rundown of the grid um so perez is all over the back of the class so we have a stappen 7.6 seconds ahead of charles Leclerc, who will well it will be ahead of his teammates shortly because uh perez is all over the back of charles Leclerc. we then have um norris in p4 on the hard compound tire we have signs on the medium back in fifth place alonso in sixth we have Piastri in seventh at the moment on the hard compound tire. Russell and Hamilton, who are on a brand new set of hard compounds of purple lap there from George Russell on a brand new set of hards um, in eighth and ninth. <coughs> Uh, we've got Hulkenberg in 10th uh, at the moment, yet to pit off of those hard compound tyres. Probably won't be too long. And then he'll be putting himself back into that pack there of Yuki Sonoda, Lance Stroll, Magnussen, Bottas, Ocon, Sargent and Gasly. Um, so yeah, a lot of action happening here on this circuit. Guys, don't go anywhere. We still have 28 laps remaining and we still have another pit stop to be made by that of Verstappen, Perez, Nor um, Norris, Sainz, Alonso. Potentially even Russell and Hamilton. I think they've got to try and ink these tyres out to the end of the race now. Um, but yeah, there's definitely still some on-track action to be had with these varying strategies. Um, there are gaps on the circuit at the moment, but it definitely won't be like that at the end of this race. So yeah, big thank you to everyone who's tuning in. Big, big appreciation to all of you. Um, 4,500 viewers in here. Woo! Woo, that's a PB, guys. That has smashed my PB uh, from last week. I keep doing it every week, so and that's a big thank you to you all. Uh, if you can hit the like button, get me my f first 1,000 like stream, that'd be much appreciated as well. We'll be back in a couple of weeks' time for the Chinese Grand Prix, which is a sprint weekend, by the way. First time we would have been there in five years before COVID. Long time, long time. Um, waiting for Max to fly off the track. Not going to happen, unfortunately. <clears throat> Just not going to happen. He's, uh, he's too confident in that car. As Leclerc now coming under attack from Lando Norris. Let's see uh, how long it takes Lando to get past him. Uh, Hamilton reporting, how did I lose so much time? Just traffic and degradation being reported to him. So yeah, Hamilton up in uh, is in P9 at the moment. He is uh, six seconds behind his teammates. Uh, not good. And looks it's going to look like he's going to struggle to make that time back up barring a safety car or an incident of some sort. Uh, Yuki doing a very good job, by the way, of holding off the Aston Martin of Lance Stroll. Lance Stroll has been in that DRS of Sonoda for the last three laps and not been able to get off. And wow, 
Charles Leclerc had a little off there. Charles Leclerc had a little off, um, and that's why Orlando was able to close up the gap so dramatically um, and has come, rightly so, come into the pit lane. Uh, Lando also coming to the pit lane as well. Um, let's see if Charles Leclerc is going to put on the hard compound tyre. You would assume so at this stage of the race. Uh, Lando does have another set of hards available to him as well. Uh, yes, Leclerc out on the hards. And George Russell, is he going to get ahead of Leclerc as they head down into T1? They're side by side. This is important for Leclerc to hold position and keep a car between him and Lando as they're now on the same set of tyres and we have a race on our hands guys between a Ferrari and McLaren and um and a Mercedes here because George Russell is on four lap old hard compound tyres Leclerc and Norris are on brand new set this is what Lewis Hamilton needed as well if these three start fighting it out Let's see if the Mercedes has a, pay, a bit of pace. There's not too much of a tyre difference there between the Mercedes and Norris and Leclerc. So let's see um, how long potentially it takes Norris to get past George Russell. I mean, Leclerc with that extra grip has already, already pulled away from George Russell. Um, so well, maybe, maybe there won't be so much of a fight here between the Mercedes uh, and they just don't have it here this weekend. But uh, Charles Leclerc, this is exactly what he needed. It was essential for him to get ahead of George Russell there so he could just get that extra gap to uh, Lando Norris and keep a car in between him. It was very, very close as he came out of the pit lane as I'm watching him back on TV. Um, but very, very essential for the Ferrari. And let's see if Leclerc is able to make up a gap on George Russell as I think it's only a matter of time for um, Lando to overtake uh, the Mercedes who just doesn't seem to have the grip and performance here this weekend compared to McLaren and Ferrari. While they've made improvements, it's still not enough, guys. Still not enough for you Mercedes fans out there. So let's stay on board with it. Um, half a second, less than half a second between Russell and um, and uh, Lando Norris. He will have DRS open as they head down into turn one. George Russell still getting a toe from the, uh, from the Ferrari in head though. And Lando gets the move done as they head down into turn one and will have his target site set on Charles Leclerc just up ahead. So let's see how long now? Are we going to get a fight? Uh, oh, this should be interesting. This should be interesting. Leclerc and Norris. I don't think we've seen these two fight out too much um, throughout their time in F1, um, if at all. So let's see. Uh, oh, oh, come on. I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to this. I'm looking forward to this. As Verstappen is uh, 10 seconds ahead of his teammate in P2. Carlos Sainz running um, in P3. Will yet to pit again. Same as Fernando Alonso in P4. Uh, Oscar Piastri, but... Wow, let's see, let's see. Yeah, I think Leclerc was holding out for potentially that one stop. <coughs> <coughs> but it was a great move from Lando later on the breaks through turn one on the outside. Great, great move. Love to see that. That is a typical overtaking move at Suzuka. That's why turn one is so great. So, uh, but, but by the way, great work by Yuki Tsunoda, who is continuing to close the gap on Nico Hulkenberg ahead, who is on 22 old lap hard compound tyres, um, and is continuing to hold off the Aston Martin of Lance Stroll, who you think should keep, um, should be able to keep, uh, or should be able to get past him um, quite quite easy, wouldn't you? You'd, you'd like to think so. Paul defending from Russell. It's, it's a tough one. It's a tough one, Suzuka, turn one. Because of the nature of the corner, it's so tough to pick a defensive line through there, especially when you don't have that grip. Um, so, yeah, he he stayed to the outside, uh, stayed to the inside, and, and Lando was just able to, to make use of that extra grip later on the brakes and swoop around the outside. So, yeah, it's a tough one. Um, it's, that's why turn one is so good. It's such a good corner because it's, it is kind of tough. Uh, to defend there on the inside. You can overtake on the outside, overtake on the inside. Um, yeah, one, one, very few corners like that in the world of motorsport. So Lance Stroll again in the DRS. So Yuki Tsunoda just cannot close the gap. He cannot get close enough to that Alpha Tauri. The Alpha Tauri probably giving off quite a bit of dirty air. And the longer Stroll stays within the wake of that Alpha Tauri, he will be hurting his tyres. So this is good for Yuki at the moment uh, because he will, he will get P10. At some point, Hulkenberg has to pit. He can't take those hard compound tyres to the end, that's for sure. Well, he can do, but he won't do uh, without losing a position to Yuki Tsunoda uh, or those behind him. So maybe goal hanging for a safety car at the moment, the Haas team. We'll see. <clears throat> Five seconds for Ocon, yeah. 
Thanks, Dawn. Thank you, guys. Yeah, and thank you for all the subs that have come through. Um, it's too many to keep track of. Uh, fast approaching to 20,000 subscribers. So a big thank you. 4,600 of you in here now. How have you... How have... I need... I need just over 400 of you to hit the like button. Come on, surely you can do it and get me to over a thousand um, likes in this stream. My first ever thousand like stream, that'd be great, that'd be great. How many laps remaining? So at the top left of your screen, you will see the lap counter. 30 out of 53 laps completed, 24 laps remaining. Um, so that's what we have left of this race. It's still quite a, a substantial amount left uh, within this race. Uh, so we'll see this race is, is far from over and done with. Um, a safety car could still spice and things up a bit, while Max is, of course, in the ascendancy and most likely going to win this race. I think we can all agree with that. Perez is still out there as well. Uh, Carlos Sainz, 16. I mean, Max Max is building up a gap where he'll almost get a free pit stop. Um, so that's what he's trying to do at the moment. She doesn't even need to worry about overtaking anyone out on track. But all right, so let's keep an eye on that battle between Leclerc and Lando. So Lando is, uh, last time around, a 36-2, 36-3 for Leclerc. 1.2 seconds behind Leclerc, just keeping Lando outside of that DRS, importantly, at the moment. Um, of course, they also need to think, potentially, about taking these tyres to the end of the race. It's a long way to go on these tyres. We've seen the hard compounds even uh, degrade quite uh, dramatically throughout this race. Uh, so we'll see. Uh, Hamilton has been able to close the gap up on his teammate, though. Um, he is lapping a couple of attempts quicker than uh, George Russell. That fight between Russell um, with Leclerc and Norris allowed him to close the gap slightly on his teammate. But yeah, it is kind of looking like that, that bold strategy of putting Russell and Hamilton on the hard compound tyre after that red flag. Um, isn't quite paying off um it's where they are is where they probably would have finished anyway if they stuck to their initial strategy but look you have to try it when you haven't got the car underneath you have to try outside the box so leclerc asking who doesn't need to stop ahead in front so leclerc obviously trying to take these to the end of the race same as lando so what we potentially may see guys um at this stage of the race <coughs> is Lando um, pull back a bit or maybe drop back a bit from Charles Leclerc. We'll see. Um, just to save his tyres. Um, to get out of the wake so that he's not sliding around. But just look after these tyres and attack him at the end. But I think if I'm Lando, I want to try and get past Leclerc. I've been quicker all weekend. There's a podium position here for me. Um, I'd be worried about signs pitting and coming on a charge as well. Um, so, yeah, let's see. Sonoda, once again, doing a great job holding off Lance Stroll down in 11th position still closing that gap to Hulkenberg Hulkenberg they're not two seconds a lap quicker at the moment than Nico Hulkenberg um Nico Hulkenberg's got to come into the pit soon surely surely um but clearly goal hanging I think um the two Alpines if you're Alpine fans I apologize I apologize in 16th and 17th after a good qualifying for Ocon yesterday um yeah a <laughs> a poor Poor race once again from them. They just don't have it, do they? Don't have that car underneath them. Thank you, Lucas. Yeah, thanks, guys. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Four and a half thousand of you. Much, much appreciated. Um, Alpine have negative error. <laughs> they have negative gears as well with how slow they're going. <laughs> um, so, right. Um, Yuki just seems to get the grip out of Spoon Corner every single time. It gives him a nice launch through 130R and, and ahead of Lance Stroll, which is just keeping him ahead of Lance Stroll as they head down into turn one. Maybe this is tactics. I mean, I can't see how, if you're Lance Stroll, why you would just sit back off an AlphaTauri when your teammate's up there in fourth position at the moment. Um, you're just being made to look like a fool, aren't you? Um, to be honest with you. So Bottas making a move on Magnussen here. A bit of on-track action. DRS, no, no, he just doesn't have enough. He got up alongside Magnussen. Thinks better of it. Maybe thinks about doing the cutback on Magnussen down into turn two, but not able to make it stick. As uh, Yuki now coming onto the back of a very, very struggling Nico Hulkenberg. Um, is this going to give Lance Stroll an opportunity to... Um, slip up the inside of Yuki Sonoda as he tries to overtake uh yeah that struggling Hulkenberg I can't imagine Hulkenberg will fight it too much maybe he will maybe he will with Magnussen <coughs> maybe we're going to see roles reversed here um of Magnussen at Saudi Arabia with Hulkenberg trying his utmost to defend um and hold up the cars behind him to allow Magnussen to 
catch up to Lance Stroll and Yuki Sonoda. I don't know how much with that big tyre delta that they've got at the moment, um, how much he's going to be able to hold him back for us. Piastri now into the pit lane. Um, he will be coming onto that second set of hard tyres um, and will be strong here towards the end of the race with 21 laps remaining, guys. Uh, so, yeah, let's see how Piastri... He might be on a bit of a charge at the end of this race. Um, might have to get it done out on track on the two Mercedes. So we definitely have some on-track action here um, at the latter stages of this race, guys. Uh, so stay tuned. Nico Hulkenberg, is he going to come into the pit lane or is he going to stay out there? Nico Hulkenberg is going to stay out there, and it's very close between those three of Hulkenberg, Sonoda, and Stroll. And Sonoda, has he got enough? He needs to get this move done on Hulkenberg as they head down into turn two because Lance Stroll is going to be chomping at the bit. And, oh, they're side by side as they head through turn three. And, wow, wow, that could have ended badly there. It could have ended badly there. We could have seen an ally Ricardo Albon as we did at the start of this race. And Yuki has got the move done in turn six once again. Oh, Yuki Sonoda. Stop that. Stop that. He did it earlier on on Pierre Gasly on the outside of turn six. And he's done it once again on a struggling Haas. And Lance Stroll now. That is a great move by Yuki because it just gives him that extra bit of breath breathing space on Lance Stroll as they head into the hairpin. I imagine Lance Stroll will have a move here down into turn 11 as Perez and Alonso come into the pit lane for their final pit stop. And um, Lance Stroll does get the move done on Nico Hulkenberg. So it wasn't breathing space for a... Uh, Yuki didn't get breathing space for a, a lot of time, but it gave him, uh, it gives him enough. It gives him enough uh, as we have 20 laps remaining. So Verstappen has come out, but uh, Perez has come out behind Lando Norris there. Uh, Perez, uh, Verstappen is still to pit, so is Carlos Sainz. Um, but Perez has come out behind uh, Lando Norris. He's now on a brand new set of hard compound tyres. And Alonso has got out ahead of Piastri as well, and he's now on a set of hard compound tyres. But a great move by Yuki there. Um, so, yeah, he is now up into P10, guys. But he is still got a worrisome Lance Stroll behind him. So hopefully Yuki can um, can hold on to it. I've been, I won't lie, guys, I've been a big critic of Yuki over the years. Um, but it's nice to see him now living up to that potential that um, was so hyped. <clears throat> We've seen flashes of it, but he's always been kind of his worst enemy, I think, uh, in regards to throwing away performances. But he's now, um, he's now starting to do it. He's now starting to do it, and it's good to see. Why is George faster than Hamilton? He's too fast. <laughs> um, so they swapped positions earlier on in the race. I think team orders. Um, Hamilton was quite... Like, he asked for it, by the sounds of it. Um, and they implemented it. George is now the lead Mercedes driver. As Verstappen comes into the pit lane and is going to get out ahead of of Charles Leclerc and his teammate Sergio Perez. So yet he has, in effect, given himself a free pit stop there, Verstappen. That is how quick he has been today in that Red Bull car. Uh, Carlos Sainz still needs to pit. He is 20 laps on those medium compound tyres, um, falling off quite substantially. Uh, Bottas still not able to get past the Ministry of Defence that is Kevin Magnussen, channeling that Viking um, Viking defence. Um, as he is from the Den, the Danish lands uh, of Scandinavia. Um, and yes, uh, Bottas just unable in that stake F1 car to get past the, the heart of Magnussen, even though, uh, well, no, actually, they have the same amount of tyres on. I thought uh, there was a tyre tire difference there. Uh, but Hulkenberg on a brand new set of hard compound tyres now. See if he's able to close. He's 17 seconds behind um, Sergeant ahead. So unless he's able to make up a substantial amount of time. Uh, Logan Sargent in the pits. Lance Stroll. <coughs> okay, so this is interesting. Lance Stroll into the pits. I thought they might take this to the end. Uh, I mean, there's still 19 laps remaining in this race, actually. Wow. I thought it was a lot less than that. Uh, so Lance Stroll coming into the pit lane, I imagine, onto a brand new set of medium compounds, tyres. Let's have a look. Softs. Softs. Is he going to be able to take softs 20 laps? Interesting. Let's keep an eye out on Lance Stroll. I don't know if that's going to work out. That seems to be a long time. Um, as Perez is on the back of Leclerc now, as he's just set, just set a fastest lap and makes 
quick work of Charles Declare down into T1 on a set of brand new hard compound tyres. Nikhil, thank you very much for the donation. Um, I don't, is that Dirham? Is that Dirham? 100 Dirham? Thank you very much regardless. Thank, glad you're enjoying the stream. And thank you to everyone who's enjoying the stream. 5,000 viewers! Oh, Thank you very much, guys. Thank you very much for everyone tuning in. Smash my PB by a couple of thousand today. If you could subscribe, keep smashing the subscribe button. Um, surely there's like 500 of you who haven't subscribed. I'll be back in a couple of weeks' time. We've done we've done these watch-alongs for quite some time now. And um, yeah, we will be back in a couple of weeks' time at China, which is a sprint race weekend, guys. First time we've been there in five years. Um, subscribe. And if you could hit the like button, come on. Come on, surely there's some of you there who can hit the like button who haven't and get me to over a thousand um, likes. It does matter. It helps just boost the community and push it in the different streams. 19.4k subs. Lovely, lovely. Not too bad at all. Not too bad at all. Right, so let's have a little rundown of the grid. Let's take stock of what is happening out there at the moment as we've seen a few pit stops. Um, signs coming into the pit lane now. So let's actually, let's just hold on to that uh, grid rundown and just see where Science comes out. He looks like Science might come in. Need a good pitch. So Science is going to come out behind Russell and Hamilton. <clears throat> Surely. Let's see what he goes on to. Uh, I think he might go on to a set of mediums. I don't think he has softs available. Let's see as he comes out of the pit lane here. No, hard, sorry. So I, he has he didn't use hard in the middle stint, did he? So um hard is hard is the right choice. I am still a bit confused by Lance Stroll there going on to softs. We'll see how that plays out. Um <clears throat> But Piastri is all over the back of Fernando Alonso. So let's take stock of the grid as it stands after that pit stop from the Ferrari of Carlos Sainz. So Verstappen in the lead, 7.5 seconds ahead of Sergio Perez. Perez has a 10 second, uh, has a 2.1, two and a half second lead on the Claire. But with that se seven lap difference in tire life, it does seem like Perez and the pace of the Red Bull has another one, two secured pretty much for um, the Red Bull team today, barring some drama, maybe with a late safety car or something. Um, We've seen it before, seen it before. Um, Leclerc in P3, um, 10 lap hard tyres. Interestingly enough, has been able to hold off Lando Norris. Maybe Lando just trying to eat these tyres out a bit and go for a charge at the end of the race. We have signs. We have Russell and Hamilton on a set of hard compound tyres in 5th and 6th, although that won't be for very much longer as signs out of the pit lane on a brand new set of hards will get past Hamilton very quickly and move up into sixth place. We have Alonso in P8 at the moment, um, who is trying to hold off uh, Piastri in P9. Sonoda, for you Yuki fans out there, Sonoda is in P10. Um, he has had, thankfully, Lance Stroll, who has gone onto a set of softs. Oh, George Russell in the pits. What? What? George Russell in the pit lane. What is happening there? What tyre is he coming out on? Is he going out on a set of softs? <coughs> <coughs> oh, sorry, I'm just waiting to see what George Russell's got. A set of mediums. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. So we'll see how that plays out. Um, maybe they thought they was eventually going to get caught by Alonso and Piastri anyway. They were on a much... Um, much younger hard tyres 10 laps difference maybe they'll do the same with Hamilton um, they'll see how, we'll see how that strategy plays out um, but yeah Yuki there in P10 thankfully has had Lance Stroll who pitted onto the soft compound tyres um, he has had that uh, worry uh, relieved from him so he can just focus on um, the track ahead of him and not in his rear view mirrors uh, we have Magnussen in 11th still Still holding off Bottas. Up seven positions today, Magnussen. Um, we'll see how much that has been taken out of Magnussen's tyres, though, having to defend from Bottas. Um, I imagine it's more so the other way around, with Bottas having to stay in the wake of that Haas for, oh, well, the last 10 laps now, it seems. Uh, Lance Stroll on a set of soft compound tyres. The only driver out there on a set of softs. I, I still don't know how Aston Martin think he's going to go 19 laps on a set of soft compound tyres. Um... We'll see, we'll see. And uh, Nico Hulkenberg, they're in 14th position. Uh, and then we have Sergeant Ocon and Gasly. Um, unfortunately for Sergeant, 
Well, he's on a set of medium compound tires. He still might catch up to the back of uh, Hulkenberg. Maybe he will, maybe he won't. But um, it's not been too bad of a race for Sargent. He's, he's overtaken a few people out on track. But other than that, yeah, not really uh, another great weekend for him. And then the Alpines, the only drivers who are lapped thus far. Um, yeah, not much really to say about him. Not really much to say. <clears throat> Hamilton, um, so Piastri still not able to overtake Alonso. So Carlos Sainz closing the gap now, 33.9 PB for him. Um, and he's closing the gap on Norris ahead, who did a 35.8, 10 lap difference between compound tyres here. So I think Sainz is going to definitely catch up to Lando Norris pretty quickly. Will we be able to catch up to his teammate, though? That would be interesting. No love lost between those two. Of course, signs without a seat for next year still, which is a travesty in my opinion. Why it's very exciting to see Hamilton go to Ferrari next year. The fact that signs does not have a seat secured for next season um, is still still very strange. Um, Hamilton reporting the tyres are still all good. We're going to stay out there. Um, so maybe Hamilton's just been eking the tyres out and not been pushing so much. Uh, but yeah, not really a good day at the office again for the Mercedes team. Um, Verstappen there with a PB, 34-4, So let's keep an eye on the times of Leclerc and Norris compared to Sainz as he crosses the finish line. The 34-4 there for Carlos Sainz and a 35-7. So that's a 1.3 second difference between Sainz and Norris. And as I said, Hamilton said the tyres were good. He comes into the pit lane. So Hamilton getting off those off those hard compound tires. We'll go on to set of mediums. I sp suppose this is probably so that uh, Russell can overtake him in the pit lane and regain that position. Don't really have anything to lose the Mercedes team. Maybe if there's a late safety car, they're then on a set of medium compound tires compared to um, old used hard tires. Um, it, not uncommon uh, that we've seen late safety cars here at Suzuka before, uh, especially with uh, a couple of truck cars out there quite close on track, particularly Piastri and Alonso and Magnussen and Bottas. Um, Bottas still can't get past Magnussen. Still within that DRS, half a second, but that Stake F1 team just does not have the power underneath it to get past um, the <laughs> quite quick in a straight line um, Haas car. So, yeah. <clears throat> who's looking forward to lollipop man <laughs> they're funny i love the way that they do the alpines are uh, running backwards <laughs> it's like they're in reverse <laughs> we are so slow <clears throat> 814 likes guys if you could hit less i need less than 200 of you to hit the like button come on let's get it to over a thousand over 55,000 unique viewers as well. Thank you. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you very much. Um, can signs get past the Claire? Uh, well, that is really where I'm most intrigued about at the moment. So he needs to get past. He's definitely closing the gap. Uh, so last time around, if we keep an eye out on lap times, guys, um, signs did a 34-3 uh, and Norris did a 36-2 as well as the Claire. So at the moment, signs is flying. Signs is flying. Um, he is definitely going to catch Norris and Leclerc. Of course, catching is one thing. Overtaking is another. So let's see. Um, he needs to, obviously, Gazi needs to get out of the way pretty quickly. But yeah, I, I would say so. I think he, I think he'll probably, I think Signs will get Norris. We'll see how, how tough Norris is able to defend here. Um, and then Leclerc, well, Leclerc is a whole different situation because you're talking about podiums. And Sainz has beaten Leclerc in the last few races, hasn't he? So, <clears throat> um, Has the safety car come out yet? No, we had a red flag uh, early on in this race. Like 30 seconds into this race, we had Albon and Ricardo coming together. They crashed into the barrier at turn three. And um, they are... Oh, so Sainz is going to get punchy at the end of this race, guys. Signs his engineer came on and said, You're on for a podium. And who's in the podium position at the moment? Ooh, there could be some late dramas here. Stay tuned as we head into 12 laps remaining of the Japanese Grand Prix. But yes, if you're just joining us, the story of this race thus far is that there was an early red flag um, just 30 seconds into this race, into turn three. Ricardo not seeing Albon come on his outside. 
cut him off. And oh, we have a yellow flag. Sergeant has gone off, and this could be the late safety car and drama that we predicted. He's definitely gone off there. We've seen drivers go off at turn nine already, and this is it, guys. I think this is a safety car. There's no way if Sergeant's not able to get that car removed. That is a dangerous position, and there should be a safety car. <clears throat> let's see, let's see, they're still waiting, they're still waiting to see where that car is, I don't know where he's gone off, but Sergeant seems to be moving a little bit, I can see Sergeant moving a little bit, is it just a spin, no, Sergeant, come on, come on, oh, I wanted a safety car, come on, damn you, Sergeant, damn you, <laughs> Ah, oh, I wanted to see what happened there. Um, has he actually made contact with the barrier or was it just a spin and he's in the track? Let's have a look. Um, the TV direction here is horrendous this weekend. Absolutely horrendous. There's been a yellow flag in Sector 2 for half a lap and they still haven't gone to see what's happened to Logan Sargent. <clears throat> Apologies. So yeah, Logan Sargent went off into the gravel and he stopped it from going into the barrier. Car looks an absolute state in regards to dust. Um, I can't believe they waited that long to, to, to go to that. That's terrible. Ah, okay. So it's, it's good for Logan Sargent that he kept it out of the barrier and for Williams. However, I'm disappointed there wasn't a late safety car and some late drama. <laughs> I mean, come on. You can't blame me. You can't blame me. Um... <laughs> Just having a look at it now. So um, Logan Sargent on board as he heads around the Dunlop curve, goes into the first Degna. And he breaks on the curb and just locks up and manages to stop the car from going into the barrier. Um, so yeah, it was just a complete off for him. And then he had to rejoin the circuit. So looks like there's quite a bit of dust that he's left back on the circuit. So we'll see if anyone else goes off there. Um, but yeah, Sergeant, Sergeant now with two off tracks this race. <clears throat> uh, Logan is going to finish behind Alpine. Yeah, so La Logan Sergeant will now be the last of the finishes. So yeah, so we had an early red flag, guys, then a restart. Um, and then Guan Yu Zhou, we lost him due to a gearbox retirement. Um, there were some varying strategies proposed because the red flag allows you to change onto a brand new set of um, new tires uh, free of charge. Uh, and well mercedes took a gamble to try and do a two-stop in an essence a one-stop race onto a hard compound tire two sets of hards just haven't been able to do it as science has got past lando science has got last past lando there as i was talking uh into turn one and he's made very quick work of the mclaren there he has 10 lap younger tires and now it's just charles Leclerc in his sights Maybe we will be getting that late drama. Maybe we will be getting that late drama because, well, I don't know how much Charles Leclerc is going to be able to defend from his teammate. I can't imagine there will be team orders played out here. They're going to let them fight. Of course, Charles Leclerc, they need to keep him happy because they've just signed him on for an extension of a contract. They committed to him quite early. And of course, Sainz, he doesn't have to even listen to team orders. Let's be honest with you guys. Even if they try and implement team orders, don't fight, don't fight. Why would you? Why would you? So the smooth operator could be sung again. Could be sung again as the Claire is on the back of Esteban Ocon, who is a lap car. But you can see the grip even on the visual of the track map. You can see the extra grip that Carlos Sainz has through the likes of Spoon Corner. And just keep an eye on that interval, guys, right up here. The interval here of Carlos Sainz and Charles Leclerc and just see how quickly it closes because Sainz just has so much grip with 10 lap younger tyres compared to his teammate. But we know Charles Leclerc is not going to give it up easy. He's not going to give it up easy. There is a podium on offer here. Um, Esteban Ocon is not going to make it easy for Carlos Sainz to get out of the way either. I think maybe he will do. Uh, Charles Leclerc will be hoping, of course, that Ocon keeps Sainz behind for just a bit longer. And he doesn't. He doesn't. So he gets out of the way pretty sharpish. And we're going to see that extra grip come into fruition here through the center S's and through the Dunlop curve um, of Carlos Sainz as he's chasing down his teammate. 
Carlos Sainz's engineer is jeering him on as well, which is interesting. Of course, they're on Carlos Sainz's side as he's now within the DRS of Charles Leclerc when it will be activated um, when they go down the main straight. <coughs> Um, but Carlos Sainz, I don't think Charles Leclerc is going to have any, any way to defend from this. He just doesn't have. So they have just told Charles Leclerc, don't hold yourself up too much with your teammates. We are racing Norris. You're asking a man to move over for a podium. So whoo, we'll see, we'll see. But here we go. Sainz is just gaining 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 on his teammate here as he heads into that chicane i don't think charles leclerc is going to really listen too much to that order from his engineer um, because he will be there is a podium on offer here and if you defend there's always a possibility of the attacking car who is faster with extra grip potentially making a mistake so here we go drs is open is charles leclerc going to defend this as they head down into t1 and signs gets it done before they even head into turn one that was not as dramatic as I thought it was going to be. And yes, Sainz is now in a podium position. The man without a seat, the man who has been dumped from Ferrari, is out of F1 next year, does not have a seat, which is criminal, absolutely criminal in my opinion, is going to beat his teammate who has been signed on for a contract extension, will be Lewis Hamilton's teammate from 2025, is going to beat him again. The only race this year thus far that Sainz will not have beaten Charles Leclerc is the one he missed for appendix surgery. Wow. Wow. I said this year at the start of the season, we are going to see an aggressive Sainz. We are going to see a Sainz who is going to prove he's going to be a man scorned. He's going to be a man who is going to make Ferrari rue the day, but they didn't re-sign him on a contract. And, well, he is definitely making them rue that at the moment, isn't he? Rue that mistake. So, whew. What a performance from Sainz. What a pro I like Charles Leclerc, by the way. I'm not, I do like Charles Leclerc, and I am a fan of Charles, and I want him to do well. However, Carlos Sainz, you, 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 he's a man scorned. Like... I, I, it's going to be great to see Lewis in Ferrari next year. And it's I think any team would take that opportunity because of the commercial element of it. But Carlos Sainz with that gets the purple lap of the race. The fastest lap of the race as well. And well, there's seven laps remaining. And oh, there's too much of a gap between him and Perez at the moment. Maybe Perez has just been eking his tyres out and not really worrying too much um about pace but that was nearly a full second a lap quicker than sergio last time around um so signs nine seconds back from perez if he kept this pace up he would be able to close the gap but there's just too much of a distance between him and uh and sergio but wow why would uh, ferrari give up signs Ham because hamilton brings in hamilton is going to make ferrari hundreds of millions of dollars <laughs> that's why <laughs> Uh, Hamilton is a brand in himself and the amount of merch and the amount they're going to bring in with sponsors and stuff like that with Hamilton is, um, yeah, is, is crazy. So from a commercial perspective, that's why they've signed Hamilton. Um, plus, I still think Hamilton, if you give him a decent enough car, will will be at the front fighting for wins. Um, so, yeah. Well, we'll see, we'll see. But Carlos Sainz, where is Carlos Sainz going to be? If he ends up in stake F1 next year or Audi, I think it's such a waste. But where does he end up? Does he end up in Red Bull alongside Max Verstappen? I don't know. There's obviously always been the talk about their two dads not getting on. Carlos Sainz Sr. and Joss Verstappen. So that could put a spanner in the works. The Mercedes seat, could he end up at Mercedes? Well, Mercedes are lining up Kimi Antonelli by the looks of it. McLaren is all done and dusted. Aston Martin isn't really open. So where could a driver like Carlos Sainz end up? He's going to end up in a midfield team, which would be an absolute travesty. Absolute travesty. <clears throat> Ferrari replaced the wrong guy. Look, Leclerc has, Leclerc has potential. He still does have potential, but he's still, as people up and widely up and down the paddock say, he's still the unfinished product. Um, and I think Carlos Sainz is, is starting to prove I think Carlos Sainz has just got better and better and better each year. So, stroll out this year on, hopefully, hopefully, yeah. 
There's still the continued rumours that Lawrence Stroll will sell up, but I don't know. It, it'll be the only way that they'll end up not being Stroll isn't in F1 anymore is if he decides to walk away from F1 and it just doesn't look like he's going to do that anytime soon. So uh, Max about to lap half of the field. Yep. Yeah, so it's been an ominous display from Max Verstappen once again, second year in a row. Second, did he win? Probably three years in a row, isn't it? To be honest with you guys. Um, at least definitely second year in a row where he has uh, won quite considerably. 11 second margin over his teammate. A 20 second margin over the next car, which is, um, well, the next car that isn't his teammate. Oh, speaking of Lance Stroll, um, he's saying it's unbelievable how bad our speed is on the straight, man. Like, it's a different category. Ah, oh, Lance Stroll's been taking lessons in the Alonso, um, <laughs> Alonso radio classes. Right, so, interesting guys, this race is still not over and done with, we still have some on-track action, because we have Alonso Piastri, Piastri not been able to overtake Alonso for quite some time, Russell is on a set of medium compound tyres, and well, George Russell is within that DRS train, of course we saw what Alonso did last time around when Russell was chasing him, will we see any more shenanigans from Alonso when it comes to the end of a race with George Russell? Let's see, but I think it's only a matter of time between George Russell overtaking Piastri. At the moment, Piastri's saving grace is that he's within the DRS of Alonso, but he cannot overtake him. Hasn't been able to for quite some time. Um, Charles Leclerc and Lando is a two second gap. We'll keep an eye out on that as well as we head into five laps remaining or four laps remaining once Max crosses the start to finish line as he has now just lapped Lance Stroll. So yes, uh, he has lapped half of the field, Max Verstappen. <coughs> but um, yeah, let's keep an eye out on that fight in the mid pack between Alonso, Piastri and Russell. And while we do, if you can hit the like button, guys, be much appreciated. Just over 100 likes needed for my first ever 1,000 like stream. And if you haven't hit the subscribe button, keep hitting subscribe. We'll be back here in a couple of weeks' time for the Chinese Grand Prix. I'll be back here for the um, rest of the season, guys. So, yeah, that'd be, um, it'd be much, much appreciated. If you could get us to... Um, I know it's a tall order. If there's, I just need over 300 subscribers between now and the end of the stream um, to get uh, 20,000 subscribers. So it'd be a great milestone. Great milestone. I, were, I was 100 likes away. Wow, shut up. Thank you very much. Thank you very much to everyone who's liking the stream. So, right, here we go. George Russell is in the toe of Oscar Piastri. He has DRS open, but does he have enough? No, he doesn't have enough on that McLaren to overtake him down into turn two. So he must wait once again. But what he has done, he has removed Piastri from that DRS of Fernando Alonso. He is just close enough to be able to get a toe from the Aston Martin ahead of him, though. Um, but all the while this is happening, is he is bringing Hamilton closer to George Russell. But I think Hamilton's been a good boy today and played kind of team orders. Um, and he won't have an opportunity at Russell. But um, Norris there is slightly closing the gap on Leclerc. 1.8 seconds now, um, where it was two seconds last time around. Oh, there's been turn 17. George Russell made a move on Oscar Piastri uh, into the bus stop chicane. I completely missed that. And, well, the, in, the incident has been, uh, he's been investigated with George Russell and Piastri. He went for a late move on Piastri as they went into the bus stop chicane um, and just run Piastri out of room. Um, that's why he had a very big run down into turn um, into turn one, but wasn't able to make it stick. Um, but yeah, wow, wow. Um, Alonso just lapping Gasly there. Um, so uh, Alonso getting a little bit of a healthy toe from Gasly. So is Piastri. Let's see if Russell goes for that move again as they head down into turn 16. Is he going to go late on the brakes? No, doesn't go for it this time around. Verstappen set fastest lap of the race um, with a 33-7. So he's going to get that extra championship point at the moment. 1,000 likes, much appreciated. 6,000 viewers in here, my most amazing amount of viewers ever thank you thank you very much um and i've seen all the subscribers coming as well too many to thank thank you thank you very much um keep smashing it out of the park with these watch longs and uh yeah i'm glad you all enjoyed them glad you all enjoyed them so right um let's keep an eye out on russell this is allowing hamilton to close up as well we have three laps remaining uh verstappen is your leader 13 seconds ahead of sergio perez 20 seconds ahead of carlos Sainz, who is closing the gap on perez but will run out of laps before he's able to have an opportunity at him 
By the way, Magnussen and Bottas still going at it. The Stake F1 car just cannot get past the Magnussen. Uh, the heart of Magnussen just too draggy in a straight line. Stroll coming under attack now on those soft medium, uh, sorry, soft compound tires. Um, and yeah, he's he's going to be overtaken by Nico Hulkenberg, I think. So it'd be a good result for the horses. They're not done too bad this year. Looks like Sonoda comfortably, comfortably is going to finish in the points for you Yuki fans. Um, but yeah, Leclerc gap on oh, the gap, just, gap has just gone out a little bit to Leclerc and Norris again. 2.1 seconds. So uh, I think the Ferraris have this covered on Lando, which I'm quite surprised about. I thought the podium position today would go to Lando. So Piastri and Russell is really where it's closest on track at the moment. So George Russell, of course, has already pushed Piastri out wide from a late move into the bus stop chicane once already. So let's see. I don't know if it's a bus-up chicane, but let's see if he's going to have DRS. But no, Piastri. Piastri, importantly for him, has DRS assistance from Alonso ahead. And Alonso might actually be doing this intentionally. Alonso probably doing this intentionally. Just giving Piastri... Oh, ooh, that was very, very close there between Alonso and Piastri. I don't know if that was just a trap map with a bit of a delay there. Um, but Alonso might potentially be doing a Carlos Sainz a la Singapore, remember, where he held up... Um, the car behind Lando Norris just to give him DRS so that um, he would be able to defend from George Russell behind. I wonder if Alonso, the wily old fox, is doing exactly the same. Um, it wouldn't surprise me because he's been able to keep Piastri comfortably behind for the majority of the race. And I think this is probably what he's doing. He's Because if George Russell gets past Piastri, he, with the tyre difference, will probably have an opportunity at Alonso. But we are on the final lap of this race, guys. On the final lap of this race, Max Verstappen has crossed the start-finish line. Nico Hulkenberg, though, in the DRS, in Lance Stroll's DRS. Is he going to have an opportunity to overtake him down into T1? And he does. Lance Stroll is not going to be a happy bunny whatsoever as he drops down into P12. And the Haas moves up into P11. Uh, up four positions today, Lance Stroll, but still not good enough considering his teammate Alonso is up there in sixth place. So let's keep an eye on Piastri and Russell once more as this will be the last opportunity that Russell will have to have an a overtake on the McLaren of Piastri. Will he go for a late move? Will he be bold? He is outside of the DRS though. Oh no, he does, does have DRS big. Russell's got great traction out of the chicane. And Russell with a run. DRS open. It's going to get the move done on Piastri. Does the Piastri defend into turn one? And he doesn't. Russell on the final lap of the race gets the move done on Piastri. Into P into P, uh, P7 there. And will he have enough to have a run on Alonso before this race is out and done with? Because Alonso is on 19 lap old hard compound tyres. Russell is on mediums. And I think they're still going quite well. Uh, Alonso might have done enough though just to hold off um, Russell for the time being. 1.3 seconds behind now. Maybe Russell um, will go late on the brakes. Of course, we know what happened last time around with the final lap in Australia. But guys, Verstappen comes round the last corner with a commanding win nothing stopped him today he put it on pole he dealt with the restart of the red flag twice got off the line ahead into t1 ahead of his teammates and wins by 12 and a half seconds another one two for the red bull drivers verstappen and perez and carlos signs carlos signs is going to finish on the podium Ahead of his teammate Charles Leclerc, as we stated earlier on today, um, Sainz has not lost to Leclerc this season yet in four races. The one race he didn't beat Charles Leclerc, he was having his appendix taken out. So Charles Leclerc in P4, so that's a second row for uh, the Ferrari drivers. Good for them. But worryingly for us neutrals, if you're hoping for closer racing and thinking that, well, maybe um, it's going to be closer as the season heads on. That's still a 20 second gap between Verstappen and the next non Red Bull car. Norris comes P5 and we have Alonso, a great result for him in the Aston Martin in P6. Russell in P7 there with his last lap overtake into Turn 1 on Oscar Piastri, who finishes in P8. Hamilton in P9. Uh, Sonoda... Yuki Sonoda just digging. He's digging the nails in that coffin of Danny Ricardo at the moment who went out on the first lap because he has scored a point and has done it in style. Half, 
a lot of credit has to go to the pit box crew and the pit crew of the Alpha Tauri team because they jumped two or three cars in that um, pit stop. If you get an opportunity to see it, five cars came into the pit lane at the same time. Um, I'm su really, really surprised that the TV director didn't cover it live. Bit of a poor TV coverage today, guys. You tuned in to the right place to keep an eye on, on F1 for this race that is for sure um, and then we have uh, Holgerberg in P11 good result for the Haas team just finishing outside the points Stroll a poor weekend for him even though he's up four positions um, yeah struggled there at the end uh, complaining about the uh, the car in itself well the teammate did alright though didn't it um, Magnussen up five positions into 13th holding a stout defense on Valtteri Bottas those two had a battle throughout the whole race the stake f1 car just didn't have the top line speed um, to overtake that uh, Haas car and Magnussen held off Bottas and then Ocon and Gasly finish 15th and 16th and then Sargent brings up the rear after he's off in 17th position the last of the finishers and then Joe retired due to a gearbox issue and then Ricardo and Albon had their first lap incident which brought out the red flag and that guys is the Japanese Grand Prix. There we go. There we go. Let's do, let's do driver of the day. I just want to say a big thank you to everyone who tuned into the stream today. All you newbies there. We'll be back in a couple of weeks time for the Chinese Grand Prix. We have the sprint shootout. We have the sprint uh, race qualifying. And then of course the race on Sunday. So be sure to turn your notifications on for when I next go live. Um, over a thousand likes. Over 6,000 of you here. That's unbelievable and we're just continuing to get subs um how close are we to 20,000 subscribers um very very close just just over 200 so i want to say a big big thank you to you all but let's run a driver of the day let's run a driver of the day competition shall we let's run driver of the day who do we think is driver of the day not many people made up lots of positions today um so I actually don't think Max is driver of the day. So I'm not going to put Max on there. <clears throat> I think, I think to be honest with you, I think there's two options. I think there's just two options. <clears throat> I think there's just two options. I think that's right. Signs or Yuki, guys. Signs or Yuki. I think, I think they're the two drivers who warrant driver of the day. Um, Yuki, like, fell back. He had a bit of a poor start. Um, he got, he did actually get a little bit shafted by uh, the uh, the strategy team today. Um, he made up for it on track, and then he held off Blanche Stroll for a number of amount of times as well um finishing in the points at his home circuit especially when there was probably even a little bit more pressure on him not um not for it being his home circuit but for uh, the nature of knowing that his teammate danny ricardo went out on the first lap and it was even more of an opportunity to, to take advantage of that um and he did so so yuki uh, finishing in p10 was great for him and then carlos signs i don't think anyone expects to see carlos signs in p3 yes charles Leclerc finishing p4 um, but primarily for Charles, that was done on strategy. It wasn't really done out on track. Um, so uh, I, I think that's a bit of a false. That's a bit false in regards to how his drive went today. Still a good drive to take those medium compound tyres as long as he did. But Carlos Sainz, wow. Another podium position. A man without a seat for next year. I don't know how many more times I need to say it. Like, yeah, crazy. Absolutely crazy. You feel that Luke Yuki just got lucky? Uh, no, I think he did very well today. He got shafted by his team. Yeah. Signs the unemployed, yeah. I forgot about Albon. <laughs> Ferrari done the wrong driver. Well, well. Yeah, yeah. 64% um, of you have signed signs. 36% say Sonoda thus far. Interesting, interesting. Who won? <laughs> Um, but yeah, what, what do you rate that race out of ten, guys? I'm, I'm a bit, I'm a bit disappointed. Logan Sargent didn't bring out the the safety car at the end. Uh, Would have done really well to bring the, the teams, uh, the, sorry, the cars bunch back up again together. I think I'd probably say that a yeah seven. 
seven that I think that was. I think that the, the intrigue on the strategies made it interesting. Uh, the on-track action was good. There were some good overtakes there. Yuki made some great overtakes through uh, on the outside of turn six. <laughs> we saw some moves down into T1, some good defending. Um, I, unfortunately, obviously, when Max drives off into the distance, it's it's kind of like it's kind of tough sometimes. Kind of tough to to see where other things are happening, um, but. When does Fisher F1 page propose to race highlights? Uh, they're normally qu pretty quick, within the hour, Jay. Yeah, within the hour. They're really good now. They'll probably be out within the next 20 minutes, I think. Um, yeah, they're always pretty good. Sky Sports do like an extended one, um, but that doesn't come out until, yeah, quite a few hours later. Um, but Changing position isn't everything. No, exactly, and that's why I said Charles Leclerc. Changing position isn't everything. But Yuki Tsunoda got shafted with, uh, he got left out a little bit too long in his first stint, got undercut quite dramatically, made a couple of overtakes out on track. Um, then, of course, his pit crew just completely did him a solid by getting him out uh, a couple of positions in that pit stop uh, when five cars came in um, at once. And then um, he held off a charging Lance Stroll for... 10 11 12 laps so much so that they forced stroll they forced aston martin to pit onto a soft which no one kind of saw coming uh it was the only driver apart from logan Sargent, who had that off to, to put the soft on in the last stint so yeah i think credit where it's due as i said i've been very harsh on yuki in the past um it's nice to see now i think it is about time it's for his fourth year in f1 um and he's showing his chops um Likewise, like if he, he just needs to continue it for the rest of the season because the start of the season can be very quickly forgotten about if you don't end the season well. Um, so, yeah, he needs to continue this. Of course, at the moment, he's just putting the nail in the coffin of Daniel, Daniel Ricciardo, um, who's just, yeah, um, still majority of blame is on Danny Rick, but it's a tough one because he's in the middle there. And I still think it's very opportunistic for Alex Albon to, to go up the outside uh, of turn three there's just not really anything that you gain there you don't really gain anything from that so uh love the if i own car that all drivers have to drive for bonus points as we show how far apart it's in well yeah yeah but i mean that's like what f2 is and stuff isn't it um i like the spec series but the f1's an engineering game as much as it is obviously about being the fastest drivers and the fastest drivers have always got the far have always earned the right to drive the fastest cars that's how it's just always ended up so I, I, no one's going to catch Red Bull now in this era, um, especially as the FIA are kind of reluctant to to peg the Red Bull back in any area. Um, we've seen it in years gone by where the dominant team has had regulations kind of targeted to them uh, so to, to bring, hopefully, the field together. Um, but Red Bull, they haven't done that with Red Bull. And I don't know if it's because they don't know where to do that and because it would possibly affect the... It would actually be a detriment and possibly affect the other teams. Um, but it does seem a bit odd that Red Bull have kind of been given just free reign to have this... To maintain this advantage for three years now. Um, so where well, that's kind of unprecedented in F1. Charles made four places. He did. Yeah, no, he did. And it was partly due to his first stint taking the medium tyre so long. However, a lot of that was due to strategy of the Ferrari team. I know we'd, we've taken the mick out of Ferrari guys and their strategy team, but Fred Vassour, the team principal of Ferrari, made some personnel changes to the head of strategy. Um, and they have been much, much better with their strategy. Um, that is for sure, since Fred has come in. And uh, yeah, that's... That, that. Ferrari are doing what they need to do right now. <coughs> Mercedes are quite not, are quite evidently not at the races, um, and are the fourth fastest car. So their biggest competition, really, Ferrari is McLaren. Now, if they can focus on beating McLaren, happy days. But then they're also fast enough, Ferrari, that if Red Bull do make a mistake, like they had the mechanical issue last week with Verstappen um, and Perez is out of position or whatever, then they're able to pick up the pieces. And pick up those wins, pick up those podiums, and being the second best in this era is, is what they need to do. Um, and you could say that they're heading definitely in the right direction. And Lewis Hamilton could have made a masterstroke decision once again 
by leaving Mercedes, a, a team that used to be dominant, like McLaren were, and then moved to a team that is on the up, like he did with Mercedes. Um, so, yeah, it could be another masterful decision uh, by Lewis Hamilton. F1 is all about the career game as well. We've spoken about Fernando Alonso, how he has fumbled the, the F1 career by leaving teams just as they become dominant um, and, and could arguably have two to three more world championships than he currently has. Um, so, yeah, yeah, we'll see. But Carlos Sainz, what, what a drive, what a drive. 593 votes. So I'm going to leave it open for three more minutes. I think I know who is uh, who is going to win driver of the day. But, um, yeah, Carlos Sainz is, is doing a tremendous job at the moment. Three for three in beating his teammate in the races he's competed in this season thus far. Um, and, yeah, uh, you can't... He's putting Charles Leclerc to shame. It's not saying that Charles is bad. That's, that's not saying anything by any means, but um, he's doing what he needs to do. He's, he's, he's beating the golden boy, in an essence, isn't he? And quite comfortably as well. Rebel sponsors love Danny. Uh, yes, I think Danny Ricardo will be given the whole season uh, in that car. Barring him crashing it out every single race, um, I think he will be given the whole season. He'll be He'll be given at least... A lot more of an opportunity than just Red Bull Junior drivers have ever been given uh, because, yeah, they love him. Christian Horner loves him. He's a brand. He brings in lots of money, lots of sponsors. Um, and, yeah, I think I think he'll he'll have that. So, uh, Real Racing design for this year is still largely by the books. Nothing particularly trick that isn't in the spirit of the regs, at least not in the same sense as DAS, Flexible Wings. Yeah, that's true, Stephen. Yeah, that is true. And that's why I think <coughs> they're not doing any one particular thing great. They're doing everything great um so it makes it difficult for them to to peg them back in a specific area i think um so which is a testament to red bull because they've nailed every department of the regulations um so um yeah but you, you'd at least like to see them try maybe like the fia like because at the moment yeah it is just verstappen so far out ahead we know perez doesn't have what it takes to to just take it to Verstappen. Um, so, yeah. Um, Verstappen's never going to be given a team. I'd be very surprised if Red Bull take on Carlos Sainz next year because that's then a driver who's quite headstrong, wants to come in and win world championships. Is definitely quicker than Carlos, definitely quicker than Perez. Um, maybe Max would welcome it. I don't know. Maybe Max wants more of a challenge of a teammate. Um, who knows? Who knows? But... Can Williams fix their cars before Shanghai? I don't know if they have spare cars. Apparently they do. Yeah. So supposedly what it is, um, they've they've put development into other areas, um, or they've just not. I think Alpine also don't have a spare chassis. There's a few teams that haven't haven't got spare chassis. Um, I, I heard the estimation is that it it costs like 1.1 million to create a new chassis, something around that. So. Um, they've they've saved on the money to, to put into development of other areas, uh, but I think they do have, I think they do have it in development and they do have it in manufacture, and I think it'll be fine for, um, it'll be fine for for Shanghai. So uh, just because you crash as well doesn't always mean that you 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 specifically damage the chassis. Sometimes sometimes it could be fine. So it's gonna be hard to pay them back. Yeah, definitely, De definitely. Talk about. Checo Perez getting used to the new Red Bull car. Um, there's nothing for him to get used to, is there, really? F3 or Super Formula Lights? Super Formula Lights, didn't. Williams still at the top of the Destructors Championship. <laughs> wasn't Logan at the top of that last year as well, wasn't he? Imagine if Sainz joins Mercedes and next year they improve the car to beat the rest. That, uh, that would really make some people sorry. Yeah, yeah, I still don't see Mercedes taking on Carlos Sainz, though. I would, but I don't see them taking him on. I think they... They've got all their uh, eggs in the Kimi Antonelli basket. Uh, they did... Well, you say it's messed up that they gave Logan to give up his ride. Australia was a circuit where Alex Albon's always gone very well at. Okay, obviously, he crashed in, in practice by pushing too hard and making a mistake. But he's always scored points there and he's always gone very well. Um, it just shows that Logan hasn't had the results for him to stand up and say no i'm i'm not giving you my car why should i give you my car i've scored these amount of points i've been driving my ass off he hasn't 
So there is no leg for him to stand on when that came to that decision as a team principal. You can't defend yourself. You can try and defend yourself, but there's not really a defense. It's just going to get batted back at you pretty pretty sharpish. And um, and he's proven he, he's, he's not the man for the job. He's not the man for the job, so... Uh, picking a team right now is a blind gamble, as no one knows. No, exactly, Rod. So there's 20, there's 12 drivers out of contract at the end of this year. Um, you would probably assume that a lot of drivers will only sign up for a two-year contract, so they're in that team for 2025, and then they're in that team for one year in 2026, the new regs, and then they will be able to position see exactly where the team that they've joined or, or stayed with is. Um, in regards to performance in the new regulations have they nailed it are they really going to struggle are they on the back foot from the get-go um, and then that will free them up to move at the end of 2026 that's probably what drivers will do uh i feel like we were seeing ferrari results that we always ought to see keeping aside the brilliant strategy face cars isn't listening anymore i think um yeah but he's not even giving Ferrari an opportunity to listen. Um, I thought they might get Leclerc to fight signs. They, or they weren't going to ask Leclerc to let him buy. Um, but they kind of inadvertently just went to Leclerc. Don't, don't hurt your race by fighting your teammate, is what they said. Um, so that's that's an admission of like, look, don't throw away a result here for Ferrari. But yeah. Uh, who is DOD? So yeah, I'm going to end the uh, not end the stream. I'm still here, guys. Um, I'm going to end the poll. 732 votes. Driver of the day for our poll, anyway, which is the only one that matters, <laughs> um, is Carlos Sainz. I thought Carlos Sainz and Yuki Tsunoda were only two drivers really worth driver of the day today. And um, Carlos Sainz has, has won it. So yeah, I don't know who actually won driver of the day in the F1 official uh, driver of the day. So... Um, I will try and find that out for you. Let's let's go on Twitter and see if I can find that out. Um, can Checo retain his seat? Signs Yuki and even Lawson, I think, is in the hunt. We can remove Daniel if he... Um, Checo will retain his seat if he continues to drive the way he is at the moment. Um, so, he is... This is, the, this is the Checo that Red Bull wants. They want Checo to... Not be as quick as Verstappen, but be quick enough that he's quicker than the rest of the teams. So that he can pick up a 1-2 pretty much every race. There's no excuse for Red Bull in that in the, the advantage that they have, barring mechanical failures and stuff. There is no excuse on outright pace alone that Red Bull should not be getting a 1-2 in every single race. Um, and that's what they need from Perez. And I think Perez has probably come to an attitude of... Uh, like what Bottas did, where he, he it took him a few years to realise that Hamilton was just better than him and that he's probably not going to win a world championship, barring some luck. And Checo is the same. And I think it's taken Checo a few years to realise I'm just not going to be able to fight for Stappen. Uh, I'm getting paid a handsome amount of money. I'm going to pick up podiums. and probably going to pick up wins. Look, maybe I'll get a bit of luck and Verstappen will have some mechanical issues and I can win a world championship. But... Um, he is now doing what needs to be done in that second driver role. Uh, and while he's doing that, I don't see them replacing him. Um, so unless they really want to, unless they've really got bored and they want to spoil the Apple car and bring in a much quicker driver to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Max, or they think can go toe-to-toe -to -toe, toe -to -toe with Max, um, they, and take a different approach of having almost two number one drivers, then... I don't know, but I don't see Red Bull ever doing that. Not while Max is there, anyway. <clears throat> Who's my favourite team? Um, I've always liked uh, Mercedes, as I said earlier on, because of uh, Lewis Hamilton and George Russell being there now as well. Um, I like Mercedes as a brand anyway. I've got a Mercedes in real life, um, so I've, yeah, I've kind of got an affiliation to them for that. Um, McLaren, I've always had a soft spot for. I've always liked. Uh, Mika Hakkinen was probably my favourite driver growing up. Um, and then we uh, have Williams as well. I do like Williams and I want Williams to do well. But, of course, the state they're in at the moment, um, it's going to take some time, especially with Logan Sargent at the wheel. So. Uh, Red Bull based around Max and Checo. Exactly, exactly. 
If they lose the constructors, he will go. Yeah, exactly. So Perez is doing exactly what he needs to be done at the moment. Australia was kind of more of a Perez-esque performance, uh, shall we say. Um, but that's what, the third 1-2 now? Is that right? Four races in. The only race they haven't had a 1-2 is Australia. So um, Max has won three times. Perez has come second three times. And um, it was only Australia, which was a poor performance Red Bull all round. So... Who will win in China? Um, you're seeing it now again. Verstappen and Perez—they just—they're just quickest in a straight line. Um, might be a bit different at China actually, because I think the circuit. So what is great about the Red Bull at the moment is that they're able to stay on throttle so much longer than everyone else. So through because they have so much balance in the car and so much performance through the tight twisty sections where a lot of other drivers are having to lift to control the car and get it turning in. The Red Bull is just like planted. They're able to just keep their foot on the throttle a lot longer and carry more speed. Um, China isn't so much like that. It's more about top speed. Um, but the Red Bull is still very quick in a straight line. So it might be a bit closer at China because I imagine they'll be running low downfall setups. Um, so we'll see. We'll see if, if it's, um, it's going to suit Red Bull. It's also a circuit that... Bit of an unknown for a lot. It's, it's an unknown for this regulation set because we haven't been there for five years. A lot of the drivers are probably, some of the drivers have probably never been there. Piastri, um, I don't think Norris maybe has never been there. Um, it was before his time in F1. I think it was anyway. Um, Sonoda, Stroll. So there's, uh, no, Stroll might have been there actually. But a few of these drivers, I mean, in the day, it's going to be a brand new experience for a few of them. So, um, <coughs> Or helmet, uh, yeah. Well, there's obviously a power struggle, wasn't there, at Red Bull at the moment? So stay tuned, stay tuned. Shanghai has two very long straights, exactly. But the Red Bull is still very quick in a straight line, <laughs> so it's it's like mm, you know, still still like that, isn't it? Um, they're just they're just got, they're just now this this regulation set like they're so good. So the Claire is P3 because press pit. <laughs> Uh, but um, yeah, it was it was an okay race, wasn't it? It was it wasn't it wasn't the best. Uh, let me just check Twitter. Um, um, Just looking to see if there was driver of the day. Where was driver of the day? Can't find it. Can't find it. Let's go on F1 official. Give me a sec, guys. Give me a sec. When you type in F1, why does it come up with nothing but like... <clears throat> can't find it, can't find it. Hey, humor. Uh, McLaren need those upgrades. Too slow on race pace, died, that gets too poor. Yeah, still, still. Um, Piastri's still obviously trying to come to grips with the tire deg, um, I think. So he's, um, yeah, he's trying. Uh, McLaren just, yeah, don't really have it over the Ferraris at the moment. Um, I think Ferrari outdid McLaren on strategy today. So fair play to Ferrari. They kept Leclerc. They went. They made Leclerc go long. Um, signs a bit better. Uh, when did they pit? So Norris pitted lap eleven or lap twelve. Signs stayed out a bit longer. Yeah. So so Norris. So it was a varying strategies because Sign the Ferrari team had two sets of mediums and one set of hards, and then the McLarens had two sets of hards and one set of mediums. And um, yeah, the, the medium strategy worked out better than the um, the double hard strategy. I'm just looking here. Anyone who had the double hard strategy, the top four were both hard, two sets of mediums and one set of hards. And then we had um, Norris, Russell, Piastri and Hamilton were, were mediums. Sorry, uh, two sets of hards and one set of mediums. Alonso was a bit of the outlier with a set of softs. Um, who else also had that two set of hearts? 
the is that it really um another year of hearing the dutch anthem yeah yeah you don't think they announced driver of the day uh fastest lap was verstappen i remember that so he got fastest lap so he gets an extra championship point um hamilton just not driving uh he's just look, he's 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 in a car that's better but not up to performance when it comes to uh, the teams that should be fighting around them. And they're not even got a car that can fight for a podium at the moment, which is like a lifeline, potentially, that they used to have. Um, but he hasn't even got that at the moment. I mean, he's just finished ninth. So it's, it's not a good start to the... I I knew that... I had a feeling this year anyway was going to be like a... It was either going to be amazing for Hamilton or it was going to be a write-off because of how he's... He's always worn kind of like his heart on his sleeve. We've seen that uh, in regards to the last couple of years of like the issues we've had in the cars. That W15 was either going to be great out of the box and he was going to be like, yeah, let's go out on a high. Um, or it was going to be a real struggle because the car is, is just nowhere near where it needs to be. So what's the time gap between P1 and P2? It was 12 and a half seconds in the end uh, to Verstappen and Perez. So yeah, dominant, dominant display from Max once again. So uh, why Ferrari wants to change driver? money um yeah i still think that lewis lewis isn't washed by any means um you put any driver in that mercedes even max they're gonna struggle to get performance out of it um they, you're not gonna see them fighting for podiums um and lewis going to ferrari is gonna bring a shed ton of cash to the company that's just a great commercial decision and if they have a good car hamilton will still get wins in that car and potentially fight for world championships um so fred Vassour has has got a great relationship with lewis as well he's worked with him in junior formulas uh when he was growing up so there's also that element to it as well and um yeah it's i, I see why it's very harsh on carlos signs i mean it's harsh on any of those two drivers really i think um to, to leave but yeah i guess obviously the opportunity came up to sign lewis and yeah um it's great i think it's great for f1 we needed we needed a change at the top of f1 been too samey samey for a while wasn't it um actually it comes to money 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 yeah as signs p3 f and ferrari is going to regret to sign him out of hamilton uh well that's what science is obviously aim is this year to make them think look and to prove to the rest of the grid, look, I'm here, I'm free, I'm available. Sign me up. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know where science is going to be next year. I really don't. It's just... Um, it's mad because McLaren is locked up. Obviously, he's already been at McLaren. Um, Red Bull, you could say, is probably locked up. I don't think they're going to get rid of Perez. And they probably wouldn't bring signs in anyway. And then Aston Martin's locked up. Mercedes is the only free seat, but then they've got Kimi Antonelli. That's everything points to that they're going to sign, bring him up into the seat next year, prep him for 2026. Um, yeah, I mean, Audi, but I don't know. I don't know. Crazy W13 is faster in his car. Well, it's not faster, but it, it, it's definitely the better, um, it's got the better results. <laughs> I'm not doing the 11 a.m. F1 race Dutch. No, I'm not doing any sim racing at the moment. I, I've i got a dissertation to finish by next Monday. Not this Monday, next Monday. Um, I'm doing the podcast after this, the Missed Apex podcast. And yeah, I'm not really touching the sim rig. I, I, I've tried to jump in and just do a couple of Super Formula Lights races in the week just to get a, a video out there. And I've crashed every time. So I'm just like, I need to just... I just need to focus on my on uni. Uni, I've got a busy month from regards to uni. Just focus on that, and then I'm done. I'm done finally, and then I can focus on all the YouTube stuff. So I know, man. I will be back later on in the year, but when I've got my mind's all clouded with like uni and education stuff at the moment, and I think that's partly why I'm kind of suffering with a bit of my sleep and everything. So, um. Am I going to return to the Super Formula? I will do it at some point. Yeah, I will do. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Graham. But yeah, no, guys, um, I'm going to end it there, actually, um, because I need to go and have... Uh, uh, yeah. 
I need to go and compose myself before I've got to go and do an hour and a half podcast, um, which is like in an hour's time or so. So yeah, um, if you want to see more of me um, and my fault, more faults on my race, uh, you can tune into the Missed Apex podcast. Uh, you can check them out on Spotify or you can check them out on YouTube. Um, but yeah, you can listen to it back. Highly recommend it. They're the only podcast, or we're the only podcast that do consistent F1. Um, we do about two podcasts a week. Obviously, race reviews, and then we do uh, like a mailbag. Uh, so like you put your questions in, news, uh, like stuff to do with like the news, um, answer your questions, kind of like what we do here, a bit of back and forth. And then um, also have some great guests on as well. F1 paddock journalists, um, former um, team strategists and stuff. So yeah, um, be sure if you don't tune in live to it, be sure to listen to it uh, tomorrow on your uh, Monday morning. It's love the Miss Apex podcast. Good man, Dutch, good man. Um, so can I do a rig tour sometime? I will do Sula. Yeah, it's not um, not completely like kind of finished yet. And I'm going to have to shift the room around at some point. I'll probably do it then when I shift the room around. Um, but yeah, no, guys, I just want to say a massive thank you to everyone who tuned in today, all the new subs. Um, we, I'm just checking the amount of subs we've got. Stream. Wow. Um, I think we've had over 200. I think we've had over like 500 subs this stream. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, 19,839 subs I'm currently sitting on. Um, so yeah, fast approaching that 20,000 subscriber count. So a big thank you to everyone. Thank you for everyone to hitting the like button as well. 1,100 likes, over 6,000 viewers. Woo, the rig is a bit... <laughs> it's finished as in like maybe some new equipment. Maybe some new equipment and that's probably when I may, may um, update it. Uh, may, may do one. So, but um, Yeah, no, big thank you to everyone. Yeah, sim racing content um, at the moment is going to be a little bit few and far between this month because I've got a busy month of just finishing uni i've got a lot my it's my last month in uni technically and there's a few deadlines i need to hit so um yeah just uh, i'll be back in a couple of weeks time for china um i think it is a two-week break uh, we have a sprint rate we have a sprint qualifying sprint race and we also have um the, obviously the race on sunday so it'll be um a busy weekend but i'm looking forward to it i think it, let me just double check uh the the, the schedule um to make sure i am correct in when those times are i might not be able to make sprint qualifying because of so the 19th or oh, i will be able to actually i will be able to so the sprint shootout i'll be able to do because it starts at 7 30 a.m uk time i'll be able to do that and then i'll be straight to work <laughs> um or i might not be able to so I'll let you guys know um, the sprint. The sprint's on at 3 a.m. What? 4 a.m. Oh. oh, there's me thinking I was going to have a lay-in on that Saturday. Um, <laughs> okay, okay. Anywho, anywho. So, yeah, I'll let you guys know if I can make the sprint race on the uh, well, sprint qualifying. Sprint race I will be, but the sprint qualifying, um, I'm not sure. But, yeah, thank you, Tom. Thank you, buddy. Um, so, yeah. No, big thank you for making this the biggest stream ever on the channel. It's only heading in the right direction. Full Fraser this year. While, of course, it's not overly interesting up front at the head of F1, it's still um, these streams still indicate that a lot of you are still uh, fans of F1 and, um, and, and you're still here. Um, this, is, this is for those of you who are kind of new to F1 and wondering if it gets any better. 100% it will be. Uh, we've gone from the most competitive season that we've ever had in F1 to three of the most dominant seasons ever in F1. And um, I don't think it will be like this ever again. We'll have dominant seasons in the future. Of course, we will do. It's the nature of the sport, but not to this extent. We've we've never really seen it as dominant as this before. Um, so yeah, things, things are on the up guys things will definitely be on the up and um, we've already seen that the red bull isn't isn't bulletproof um as in australia so yeah um have a lovely rest of your sunday guys and i will catch you um in a few weeks time for the chinese grand prix have a lovely rest of your day guys thank you bye